Well, the series between the Phillies and the Pirates started out well for the Phillies. A great story. Jonathan Pettibone made his major league debut on Monday in front of his family, and he was outstanding through five and a third. They went to the bullpen, but not before the Phillies were able to muster some offense against A.J. Burnett. And then a little later on, when the game was in the balance, Jimmy Rollins looped a single to right field that scored Eric Kratz, and the Phillies walked away with the victory. It wasn't Pettibone's, but he pitched well. Game two, surprising. Jeff Locke was able to mesmerize the Phillies hitters unlike any other game this year for him. He was around the strike zone. Cole Hamels was very good. This ball off the bat of Brandon Inge, who was just off the injured list, scored Walker and gave the Pirates the lead and then really closed things out in the ninth inning. That fastball right at the knees of Ben Revere. Now Wednesday, a little different story. A lot of energy because the Phillies went yard twice. This was the second home run. A long one off the bat of Ryan Howard. That gave the Phils a 2-1 lead. They eventually took a 3-1 lead, but then things kind of unraveled. Inge again, off the bench as a pinch hitter. This base hit scores Marte, and the Pirates were able to take the lead, and then Grilly again closed the door as the Pirates took game three. So now the Phils are looking to salvage not only the series, but also the homestand. It's the first Citizens Bank Business Person Special of the year here at the ballpark. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, along with Chris Wheeler. You know, this has been an interesting series. I guess you could say the same about the homestand as a whole, counting the Cardinals series that the Phillies had before this. Phillies desperately need a win today. And, Wheels, they desperately need to stay out of the Pirates' bullpen. They do, Tom, and they need to score some runs, too. That's been the problem. Three runs or less in a lot of games again. Again, this year, a great starting pitching. But we've been pointing out that if the Pirates get ahead of you, right now they're one of those teams that shorten the game very, very well, especially the eighth and ninth inning. Even the seventh inning, that can be pretty tough, as they've shown in this series. You see their overall rankings, the things they've been able to do in the game on Tuesday. They bring Watson in, the young left-hander, and he does a heck of a job. He threw it right where he wanted to a couple of times on the outside corner. And then they go to Melanson, who has been very, very good for them. And then Jason Grilly, as Tom pointed out in the opening, has shut the Phillies down for a couple of saves. In fact, this guy is nine out of nine so far. Now, here they come last night again with these two guys, and nothing much happens. They get a double play there. They also get a lot of strikeouts out of this bullpen. And when you get all these strikeouts at the end of a game, that's what every manager wants from their bullpen. Strikeouts because nothing's going to happen. Yeah, and you talked about the Phillies offense. The Phillies offense has been rather quiet in key situations during this series, in particular against the Pittsburgh Pirates. They're hoping that changes this afternoon. In the final game of this series, Charlie Manuel's made a few adjustments to his lineup, which we'll get to in just a few moments. It's Cliff Lee on the mound. He's pitched well. He'll be opposed by James McDonald. He has been up and down for Pittsburgh. Well, one of the favorite things here in Philadelphia, even back at the vet, are the business person specials. Just getting away from the office, getting away from school, because it's take your kid to work day as well. A lot going on. Lineups at first pitch when we return.
to wrap this series up in a positive way and head to New York for a three game set. Cliff Lee is warming up out of the mound right now for the Phillies. Let's take a look at the Pirates starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. Leading it off in left field, Starling Marte. Brandon Inge bat second, followed by Andrew McCutcheon and Gabby Sanchez. Michael McHenry does the catching today. Pedro Alvarez, the third baseman, bat sixth. And the bottom third of Tabata, Barmas, and McDonald. And they'll face Phillies left-hander Cliff Lee. Lee winding up on the mound, warming himself up for today's ballgame. Coming off a rough outing his last time out, but he's pitched overall very well this year with an ERA of 2.83. Well that outing he had last time was strange because of the walks three walks in one inning they all scored and the way the Phillies are going right now the way they're not scoring runs all these little things that happen in the game get magnified because uh, you lose them and there's Cliff Lee's scouting report he will control the tempo of the game that's something we like to put on there because that's what he does and everything that happens with Cliff Lee happens fast he gets them out or they may get runs off him. It's time now for our Nissan keys to this afternoon's game. Bright, sunny, cool afternoon. Wind blowing in a little bit. Well, try and split the series, and not only that, but also the homestand. Now, James McDonald, their starter today. You don't know what you're going to get, but if he's if he's not real sharp, you can be patient with him and hurt him. Well, Starley Marte will lead it off for the Pirates, and he takes a pitch inside, so we're underway, and it's one ball and no strikes. Marte a 329 hitter. He has a home run in nine RBIs. He's five for 13 though this series. And he grounds one back toward the middle and he's got a base hit. He's found himself in scoring position in the first inning of each game so far. So he likes to run so Phillies will keep an eye on him over at first base. Well, Brandon Inch had a big hit last night and the night before. Yeah, Cliff Hurdle, or Clint Hurdle was telling us the other day that he really thinks Inch can help his ball club against some left handed pitching, and that's what he did last night, and that's what he had done the night before against Cole Hamill. So he, he gets a start here today at second base. Gets the start against the left hander. And he takes high 1 0. That's because Neil Walker, just to give him a day off, but also because he's much better left handed hitter than right handed. Gives him a good bat off their bench for later. Well, Inge is also 16 for 43 against Lee, hitting 372 against him. There's a strike on the inside corner, and it's one ball and one strike. Phillies play the infield at double play depth. Ground ball foul, and it's one and two. One of the numbers that uh, jumps out for Cliff Lee is the same thing that kind of jumped out for him last year. The Phillies have scored two runs or less in three of his four starts. Now since the beginning of 2012 he's received the third lowest run support in all of baseball. Curveball hit foul. He just has to hit better. <laughs> it, well I guess he probably thinks that himself. <laughs> it's got to help his own cause right. as they like to say. Very competitive. And he hasn't hit as well, so they're not scoring as many runs for him. Now it is ridiculous. Some of these starters, and it's not like guys aren't trying to score runs, but some of these starters have really pitched well, and they're not, they don't have much to show for it. Out towards center field. That's pretty well hit. But Carrera is out there and puts it away for the first one. I mentioned the wind. Anytime it turns around like this and it's cool, it's usually out of the northwest, and it is today. That means it'll blow in from left to right. And that really helped knock that one down. Carrera yeah. playing center field today. Excuse me, Wheels for Ben Revere is having a little bit of a, a leg issue. Yep. There you see the flags. I think it's a combination. Charlie talking about having a little problem with a calf area, and also he's really struggling. So not the worst thing in the world to sit a guy. Well, now with one out, it'll bring Andrew McCutcheon to the plate. He'll get those throwovers from the bench as Cliff Lee and he'll throw over but there's not much chance he's ever going to pick anybody off. Not a whole lot of hard in the throwovers. He, you know you get a throw over you throw over because there's reasons why they're called from the bench. So we get a miss it's 0 and 1. And they're trying to see the base runner. Roger Craig used to always say the base runner will tell you a lot of times what's going to happen. Because he says they're thieves. They're out there to steal. I never forget when Roger <laughs> Craig used thieves. to talk like that. They're out there to be thieves. 
Swing and a miss, 0 with two. So even if the pitcher doesn't throw over there to pick the guy off, guys on the bench that are putting those signs down, Mick Billmeyer doing it for the Phillies, they're trying to learn something for what the base runner shows you. Marte goes, pitches hit in the air down the right field line. It'll be out of play. And it remains 0 and 2. It's time to take a look at our Mazda leaders. And Cliff Lee is always among the leaders in strikes thrown. And he leads the National League ahead of Kyle Loesch. Rosenthal, surprisingly, he's the, the kid out of the bullpen for the Cardinals that has trouble with his control from time to time. Shelby Miller and Bronson Arroyo. Not much of a surprise that Arroyo is around the plate at all times. Yeah, that's why hitters are so aggressive against Cliff Lee. Over toward third, that might be two. Friends in first chance, and Utley won't make a throw over to first. McCutcheon still runs very well. Yeah, and Marte, you've been talking about his speed, Tom. He got on Utley to the point where why throw it? Because you're not probably not going to get McCutcheon, and the guy's right at your feet, too. Well, McCutcheon's now 0 for 12 in the series. Kevin Francis with a good play there. Gives him a good throw, but watch how he's on. Uh, well, not under a lot of pressure, so you may as well just hold on to it. Two outs here at the top of the first. Gabby Sanchez is due up. Sanchez, 250 overall with two home runs. He's hit a home run in this series. And he takes on the outside corner. It's 0 1. He's 2 for 5, or excuse me, 2 for 4 in the series for the Pirates. Seems to be a true platoon over at first with Sanchez and Garrett Jones. Well, they both have power potential. Garrett Jones was having a lot of trouble last night with that slow stuff. I guess that's an understatement. Fly ball shallow center field and Carrera with the sunglasses on shading his eyes waits for it and Cliff Lee is through the first inning. It's a 14 pitch first inning for Lee. He leaves one over at first onto the bottom of the first Pirates nothing the Phillies coming up. The Phillies go to the bottom of the first inning. Let's take a look at the Phillies starting lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. It's Rollins, Friends, and Utley, followed by Howard, Nixon, Brown. In the bottom third of Carrera, Eric Kratz, and Cliff Lee. They'll face Pirates right-hander James McDonald. McDonald's a, a talented kid who the Phillies first saw when he was with the Dodgers this year, two at two, with an earned run average of 4.12. One of the things that you notice right away about him is right there are those walks. That's the thing about him that you can get him to walk people. And uh, Phillies have had games where he'll get really wild. Last time, as you look at the scouting report, curveball is really, really good. He'll try to use his changeup a little bit more, but he's more fastball, curveball. Last time he was here was that electric night when Chase Utley came back and he hit that homer off him his first time up. Phillies had a nice lead in that game. The place was alive. 
but they lost 11-7. Well, they're hoping they can win one 11-7 here today. Jimmy Rollins takes low. It's one ball and no strikes. Rollins this year 267 with a home run and seven runs batted in. He's four for 12 in the series against the Pirates. And he hits that one in the air to right field. It's playable for Tabata. And one out here at the bottom of the first. And that'll bring Kevin Franz into the plate. A reminder that it is Earth Week. The average family does six to eight loads of laundry a week. Washing full loads means doing fewer per week, saving money, energy, and thousands of gallons of water. Green is universal. I think there are times in my house we might do six loads a day. <laughs> Just a lot of people roaming around their wheels. That's a lot of water. Wheels, the most patriotic man in the ballpark is out in Ashburn Alley today. Yeah, he probably is with that outfit. Now you think that's an honor of Apollo Creed, or you think he's uh, might be, an honor of the country? Might be the uh, opening of the Presidential Library today at SMU. That's a big ceremony down there. All the living presidents were there this morning for huh. that, for President Bush's library. 0-2 oh, is fouled away by Franzen. There's so many reasons he could be wearing that outfit. <laughs> Very patriotic day. Very patriotic. Put all the living presidents together like that, that's a big thing. Sure is. Franz at a 308 hitter with no home runs and four runs batted in. Outside, one and two. He had a pinch hit in last night's ball game that gave the Phils a 3 1 lead. And he had a lot of emotion when he was over at first base. It was a pretty good moment in the game. And he lines that one caught by Alvarez. Hit it right on the nose, and there are two outs here yeah, in the first. That ball was hit hard. One of the hardest things to do in baseball is to get that two out. Run scoring pinch hit, and that's what they got last night uh, when they they lifted Roy Halliday and gave an extra run. And you thought, well, that would really put them in good shape. There's Kevin hits that right on the nose. Alvarez in perfect position up the ladder makes the play and robs it right in the weather. That looked like a double off the bat. And in a matter of seconds, that's what Kevin Friends had probably thought. And then he went, oh, yeah. Now Utley will stand in. He takes outside. One and zero. Oh. Yeah, well, that one didn't take long to get to it. Utley homered in yesterday's ball game. He has four hits and ten at bats uh, against the Pirates. He started two of the first three, and it's two and zero. Oh. Hit a home run last night in the first inning with Juan Rodriguez on a fastball. Went to the upper deck. They did a lot of things well in that game last night, and then unfortunately they did some things wrong too, or weren't able to get runners in from third with less than two outs. Cost them at the end of the game. Two and one the count as Chase fouls it back. Not only has this been a good series for Chase, it's been a good homestand. He's nine for 25. He even has a bunt single. And they just went to the overshift with the count the way it is now. It's interesting. Earlier in the count, they had the shortstop over the shortstop side. Now look where the way they are. I guess they figure he's even in the count. He's more likely to pull now. Behind in the count, early in the count, or maybe he'll hit one up to the left of second base. 2 2 pitched oddly. So we got a miss and a breaking ball. And the Phillies are retired in order here in the first inning. No runs, no hits, nobody left. We've completed our first frame. On to the second. Michael McHenry will lead it off for the Pirates.
return home to take on the Miami Marlins in a four game series and then Sunday a reminder it's a 235 start and all women 15 and over received the StubHub Mother's Appreciation Chase Sutley tote bag. Get your tickets for all four games of that series three night games and the day game the 235 game on Sunday the 5th by going to Phillies.com. We go to the second Michael McHenry will lead it off for the Pirates. McHenry pinch hit in last night's ball game. He's 0 for 1 in the series. And he takes low. It's one ball and no strikes. Pretty good backup catcher. 333 this year with two home runs and four runs batted in. He has some power. You see that swing right there. He's, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Pull power. And he, he does a nice, as you said, he's a, he's a really good backup catcher for him. Does a nice job as a career minor leaguer. Well, the problems they've had at catching the last few years, he's he's been the everyday catcher at times too. Inside two and one. Well, for a long time, it looked like Domit was going to be their number one guy, switch hitting catcher. That just didn't work out. They've got a very good prospect in Tony Sanchez, who's down in the minor leagues. Uh, he's a Triple A. In fact, he had a walk off base hit the other night. Uh, for the Pirates, so you know he could be up here in the next couple of years. He's a former top pick. Two and two, the count to McHenry. And a called strike three. Came back with a cutter on the outside part of the plate. First strikeout for Cliff. And with one away, Pedro Alvarez is coming up. Let's check in with Murph. Murph. All right, see Mac. Well, uh, Eric Kratz obviously behind the plate today, catching uh, Cliff Lee, and he was on the WIP Morning Show this morning as I was driving here to the ballpark, and they asked him about what it's like to catch a guy like Cliff Lee, and this is what he had to say. He said, you know, it's kind of like you're in the middle of the United States, and you get in your car, and you start driving, and you're driving on the highway, and you're going along, and next thing you know, you're two states over, or I guess in like the sixth inning, and you're, you're having a great time and having great results. He said, that's the way it is to catch Cliff Lee. You just don't understand how quickly you get to where you need to be that sixth or seventh inning. He's so methodical. He, he repeats his delivery over and over, so aggressive in the zone. He said he's a great guy to catch for those reasons, and, uh, you know, and certainly he's a great guy to play behind for those reasons as well, guys. It's really interesting way to put it. I thought I, I thought mean, so. to think, think on the fly like that. <laughs> yeah. Well, Eric's a pretty crafty guy. Think about driving to Florida and all of a sudden you, you look up and you're in North Carolina. That would be nice. Well, exactly there you go, right. Wheels. That's, yeah. what, that's what it's like to catch Cliff Lee. It's a great <laughs> point, Murph. Oh, and to the count to Pedro Alvarez. A 172 hitter, four home runs, eight RBIs. Seems like it takes a long time to get to North Carolina for some of us. Not for Tom. No. Yeah. Well, you picked right up on that, Murph. Nice going. <laughs> Inside, it's one and sometimes, two. Sometimes, you know, you do hit him down the middle a lot anyway. I've seen you, and I teed that one up for you. It's all within the boundaries, boys. It's all within the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Line drive, base hit for Alvarez. So he's aboard with a one out single. That'll bring Jose Taba to the plate. You know, the thing about Kratz saying that about Cliff Lee. I would think as a player, that's the kind of pace you would want. Sure. You know, it's the one you would you would embrace. Yeah, as Murph said, and they were talking about you like to play behind a guy like that. Your infielders are always on their toes because he gets the ball, he throws it, and they make early contact, and here it comes. He just made a bad pitch there. Kind of the same pitch that Alvarez hit last night. Well, that was a cutter. The one last night was a slider. It was a hanger out over the plate. That guy's very vulnerable to breaking balls away, hard stuff away. But if you hang it there, he can hit it. One ball and no strikes the count. And there's a liner to center field. Carrera waits for it. And makes the catch. They always say the hardest ball for a center fielder to catch is the liner right at them. Because you're just not sure which way it's going to go. Up, down, left, right. And that one took off. Right at the end. And Ezekiel Carrera. Has to make a little jump for that one. He didn't plan on it that way. Two outs for Clint Barmas. Barmas a 148 hitter, no homers and two RBIs.
out of play, and it's 0-2. Well, Toyota Major League scoreboard, another day game going on up in New York. Matt Kemp, who had his first home run of the year yesterday for the Dodgers, picks up an RBI today. The Mets won last night's ball game on a grand slam by Jordani Valdespin. 2-1 count right down the middle. And did he hit it? And a call, strike three on the inside part of the plate. Second strike out of the inning for Cliff Lee. So at this point, according to Eric Kratz, we are somewhere in Nebraska with Cliff Lee on the mound. Little paint on the inside part of the plate. We go to the bottom of the second here in Philadelphia. Wills, got any ideas? Derek Gunn has complete coverage of the first round of the uh, from New York City, the Kelly Draft, day one, presented by Family Chrysler Jeep Dodge tonight at 10:30, only on Comcast. Well, if I didn't have an opinion, I'd be the only one. <laughs> that is true. We talk about something that's been covered a little. Do you think offensive line tonight? What do you think? You think you're a trade out of the four spot? No, I do. You can always stop by Radio City if you want to watch the draft. Right, right up the street from the hotel, not that far. Right up there on 7th Avenue. Ryan Howard will lead it off against James McDonald. And he takes a strike at the knees. It's 0 and 1. Howard hit a home run in last night's ball game, his second of the year. Overall, 273. Here's the home run last night a breaking ball a curveball got a little bit middle in and did that baby take a long ride. But things are really going well in that game last night. Lays off a curve and it's two and one. This is another guy is going to throw him curveballs too. You have two pitchers that use fastball curveball as they're as they're actually they have three when you think about it. Burnett too. There are three pitchers on this staff that are fastball curveball and then stuff after that. How many staffs you can say that about? There's A.J. Burnett. Well, uh, Howard lines one down the right field line. That's going to be in for a base hit. Off the wall. He's headed to second. And that'll be his sixth double of the year. Really fought off a high fastball, it looked like. Teams are really trying to crowd him. And uh, that looked like he. Uh, let's see where it is. Yeah, he pulled his hands in pretty well that time and hooked this baby into the corner. See his arms come back towards his body and then he got it into an area where he could make a double out of it. So he's in the second standing. Now Lance Nix is the batter. Be nice to get an early lead, but a bigger early lead. More than just one nothing or two nothing. Yeah, and, and Lance Nick's a perfect guy to pull here and try to get Ryan Howard over to third or maybe get more out of it. Nick's a 265 hitter with two home runs and five RBIs. We mentioned last night he's been really the game's best pinch hitter. 
in the early part of the year. Last night he just missed getting another pinch hit base hit or home run. Yeah we showed a great replay when they slowed it down and froze it. it the ball was off the down by the label as opposed on the barrel and just that little bit on the bat. Want to know the count. Shows bunt takes low. Lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Kaylee Brain. Phillies hit a home run at tonight's but today's ball game and Kaylee will win a hundred dollars. You want to you want to play for an early run that's all good but Lance Nix is one of those guys he's not don't give himself up with a bunt. Pull the ball and see what could happen. Pull it right into the seats in right field. Exactly. And he hits it hard on one hop. That'll get Howard over to third. Yeah, hard he hit that thing and you know if it's not right at inch it's a, it's a base hit. And that's what you want. I'm sure they yelled at it from the bench. No 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 no. We, we did a little of that up here. It's not our role. <laughs> but. It'll bring Dominic Brown to the plate. Dominic 224 two home runs six RBIs the infield is in why <laughs> I, I don't know winds blowing in expect a low run game with Cl with um, Cliff Lee I mean, maybe okay just threw a couple out there it has to be the only reason now well, it may work but it's oh, still sure. surprising. They know that uh, there's Clint, the hurdle, the manager. They, they know that Ryan Howard's not going to run on contact. At least they would think that. But they're just not going to prevent a dribbler from going through and giving the Phillies a one nothing lead. What a two the count. If I'm them, I, I move the middle infielders back another step because you're still. If he goes on contact, you've got him easily because he doesn't run all that. Yeah, well. you don't have to play it all the way in, and they are kind of halfway. So we're gonna miss. Doesn't matter at this point. Second strikeout for James McDonald. He just threw curveballs to him. This is the thing that's plaguing them again early in the season. The inability to get these guys in from third. Now you can still do it. There's two outs, but fly ball right there, you get a run. Carrera 125 hitter and he takes a curve ball inside and low one ball and no strikes. Carrera is making the start today in center field where he's made 57 major league starts. His one hit is an infield hit. And he lines one down the right field line foul. A little out in front. And it's one ball and two strikes. You see McDonald, fastball, curveball. Occasional changeup. Donald, as we mentioned, is over from the Dodgers organization, but he's been with the Pirates since the middle of the 2010 season. Last year, he reached a career high in wins with 12. He was 12 and 8. Well, and good first half. His second half, he started to tucker out a little bit. This guy pitched against the Phillies in the playoffs. He did. The Dodgers, right, Tom? Yep. yep. Back in 08. Foul ball, and it remains 2 and 2. He's hanging some of these hooks, too. So far, not that much damage. Out of Long Beach, California. Back in 08 in that playoff series against the Dodgers, he had seven strikeouts and five and a third innings of work. Yeah, he was. He came out of the bullpen, did a nice job for you. I think it was one of, one of the Billingsley games that he came out of the bullpen. Yeah. And a called strike three, a fastball right down the chute, and the Phillies once again leave a runner over at third. They do so here in the second. We go to the third. No score.
Time now for the Dodge Stump the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information and please submit your answer on the subject line. Wheels, here's the question. Who's the all-time Pirates leader in walks with 937? It's no longer John DeSangro's birthday, so the questions get tougher. Yeah, he's been tough the last two days with these. And it knows something about the Pirates. They can do Jay Bell. But you knew Wilson, you just didn't know Craig Wilson. Well, yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> this was this is another tough one. About a guy that walked a lot with him that would have been there that long. We begin the top of the third, and James McDonald leads it off. McDonald takes a strike. Folks couldn't see wheels up here in the booth, but as he was contemplating uh, what the answer was, it was as if a thought bubble was going to pop up over your head. Yeah, it felt like the Annie Hall move. One ball, one strike to count to McDonald. One for six so far this year. He came into this. Uh, the season with an earned with a batting average under a hundred. Yeah, he's never been known as a real good hitting pitcher and has to wear that pad on the right arm. Protect his pitching elbow. There you see it. Off his foot. Oh boy. That's not good for them. Looks like a shin shin shot too. Oh no! It was right off the foot. Oh. Now the only thing is, is that that spike has a, a, a protective garb on it, guard on it, just from when he pushes off and lands. Yeah, the toe plate for. Yeah. I don't think it helped much. I don't think it helps. He's just trying to feel that foot again. Feel his toes. He pulls that one through the hole on the right side. And he's got a second base hit of the year. Third hit overall for the Pirates. Wish we don't want to go there with what can happen when the pitcher leads off an inning with a hit. That was a pretty good swing, too, from him. Phillies will take on the Cleveland Indians in a two game series, May 14th and 15th. The 15th is the Citizens Bank Business Person Special. Now, the 14th, all fans coming to the ballpark that night will receive the free baseball cap, compliments of Teva Respiratory. Asthma Awareness Night at the ballpark. Get your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Starley Marte singled his first time up, and he takes high. It's 1-0. He will bunt, and uh, Kevin Franson has to respect that. He's up on the grass at third, backing up a step as you're watching right there. He went. Sure did. He didn't. According to the first base umpire, Mike McGlinsky, it really did look like he went on that one. It did look like the bat waggled out into the zone a little bit. Two and zero, the count to Marte. Marte last year uh, played most of the season in Indianapolis. Where he hit 286. He had 12 home runs, which is pretty good, but he also had 13 triples and 21 doubles. You see why after watching him in this series, he can run. And he came up to the big leagues, played 47 games for the Pirates, and hit five home runs and had six triples. He played in San Francisco. He could really get some triples, couldn't he? San Francisco or Detroit. Swing and a miss. They tied him up with a cutter. Third strikeout for Cliff Lee. 1,560 for his career. Did a real good job pitching to him, changing speeds and locations. As Tom said, he got him with that cut fastball. Today's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language through the menu on your cable box. Brandon Inge swings and fouls the first pitch off the third baseline 0 and 1. Now Inge's case no chance that he's going to try and bunt for a base hit and he don't sacrifice with one out so France can move back.
Ball two strikes the cap. And a called strike three. Painted on the inside part of the plate. That was a regular old fastball. Well, he can do that with the best of them, and hitters just walk away. They don't even look back at the umpire. They know that guy just made a perfect pitch on me, and what am I going to do except go take a seat on the bench? Well, that's exactly what Inge has just done. And it leaves it for Andrew McCutcheon with two outs. McCutcheon reached on a fielder's choice his first time up. It's that one in the air to right field. Lance Nix is out there. Phillies have lost two of the first three games in this series to the Pirates. And Andrew McCutcheon is hitless in 13 at bats. To the bottom of the third we go, and Eric Kratz will lead it off for the Phillies. wrong when you buy right and buy Mazda. We believe if it's not worth driving, it's not worth building. Scoreless as we go to the bottom of the third. Bottom of the order, do up for the Phillies. Eric Kratz, Cliff Lee, and then the top of the order, Jimmy Rollins. James McDonald, who was on the base path, says that inning came to a close. We'll keep an eye on him. He took that foul ball off his foot, and he's sh is shaking it in a, trying to shake it out a little bit more. As he wanders around the mound. Great job by Cliff Lee, too, because so many times when that pitcher gets on or that nine hole hitter gets on, happened again last night. He get hurt by the top of the order, and he just went right after those guys and buried them with strikeouts. Eric Kratz will lead it off for the Phillies. Kratz uh, with a couple home runs so far this year. And he lifts that one to shallow left field. Marte, the left fielder, comes in. MLB.TV is celebrating 11 years. Join the millions of fans and subscribe today. Watch every out of market game live online on your favorite mobile and connected devices in HD quality with MLB.TV Premium. Visit MLB.TV today. MLB.TV Baseball everywhere. Cliff Lee takes a strike. It's 0 1. One for nine so far this year. Broke his bat. Now two outs. We go to the top of the order for Jimmy Rollins. You get in a Cliff Lee game and everything just moves along. Huh? It's amazing. Unless the other guy is just. Just totally lethargic out there on the mound. The game's just zip, zip, zip along. Well, I think because McDonald is able to uh, keep it going too, because the Phillies haven't managed a whole lot against him. Well, it's not like their Phillies are going to walk a lot. That'll bring Jimmy Rollins to the plate. Murph just popped into our ear and said we're in Kansas now, according to Eric Kratz. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Didn't even know it. It was a smooth flight. 
Oh, we're driving, Wheels. Oh, that's right, we're driving. Outside corner. It's one ball and one strike. <laughs> Curve ball, and it's two and two to Rollins. Rollins flied out to right field his first time up. Donald has pretty good command of his stuff today, too. Other times you see him, he can take that curveball and get ahead. He's throwing it for a strike. And then he throws the fastball just off the inside. Corner. And he's done a very good job moving his fastball in and out and getting outs on both sides of the plate. So to his credit, he is on his game. It's not the, you know, one of the keys of the game today we had on there was patience with it. It's tough to have patience when he's throwing it over like this. Four and Rollins is aboard with a two out walk. Aside from Ryan Howard's double, Kevin Franz's swing in his first at bat was the hardest hit ball against McDonald, and he lined out to third. 38 pitches, and there are two outs here in the, the third inning. Rollins has stolen three bases so far. He hasn't stolen a bag though in a, in a few games. Takes his lead off first. You got McHenry behind the plate. It's one of the times to run if you think he can make it. Get into scoring position with two outs. That ball gets by Gabby Sanchez. It shoots off the half fence. Rollins will stop at second. Well, that came back it in did. a hurry or he could have gotten to third. Because that was in no man's land where nobody could back it up in time to do anything with it. If it had just died there, he'd have been able to get to third, but it shot right back out onto the playing field. Yeah, Rollins was, a, it looked like he was running that way, thinking he would, he would have a chance to go to third. Here it goes. No chance to catch it. Now watch how quickly it reappears. Boom! Here it comes right back out again, and inches on it in a hurry. He has to stop it second. I don't know what it hit. It must have hit a an opening to one of those bars. Jimmy's laughing about it too because she said that his first thought when that went by is, "I've got third base here." You know what it might have hit? It might have hit the uh, the brick, the cement on the bottom of that fence down yeah. there. That would make sense. Franz and hits it back towards shortstop. It's gobbled up by Barmas. Low throw over to first, but it's dug out by Gabby Sanchez. And the Phils leave another one in scoring position. They've left two so far this afternoon. We've completed our first three innings. It's the Pirates nothing and the Phillies nothing.
Not to get you ready for the game like a freshly brewed cup of Green Mountain coffee. K cups delivered in all the flavors you love by who but WB Mason. We go to the top of the fourth inning. Not a whole lot of offense for either team. The Pirates have three hits. The Phillies have just one. Cliff Lee will face Gabby Sanchez, Michael McHenry, Pedro Alvarez. As we begin the top of the fourth, Lee, after allowing a leadoff single in the third, was able to get the next three hitters, the top three hitters in the order. Sanchez flied to center his first time up. Had a strike on the outside corner. He went with a change up to start it off. And it's 0 and 1. Inside, one ball and one strike. Seems like every outing starts that Cliff Lee is out there. It's the same one. You know, everything's right around the strike zone. Pounds the strike zone and likes to throw inside to both left hand and right handed batters. Off the end of the bat foul. It's two and two. Now the the one exception might have been his last outing where he just he was just out of whack a little bit. You know, his 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 command was out of whack. His motion was out of whack. He was trying to figure some things out on the fly. Yeah, I think that's why sometimes that really sticks out so much because you don't see it often. Popped him up right side of the infield. Ryan Howard sunglasses on crosses into foul territory one away. And that'll bring Michael McHenry to the plate. Sarge has been a lot made of the lack of offense or execution by the Phillies so far this year. I mean, it's it's been one game after another. All these games with three runs or less so far. Day game after a, a difficult loss. Good thing, bad thing. I think you want to get back out there. Uh, for me, especially in the the manner that they lost. When you start losing ball games late, those are the games that really kind of eat at you. I mean, it's almost better to lose it. You know, 12 to 1. You can get that over with. But anytime you lose, if you can get back uh, the next day quick, uh, things will work out. At least you feel that it'll work out a lot better for you. And then you just hope that something clicks. We we've talked about this a couple different times this year. We've touched on it that there's been those two games against the Mets where I think they felt all right, everything's clicking offensively. There hasn't been a whole lot of clicking no, going on no. just yet. And I don't think you can actually tell when the team gels. So until it's like about a week or so, guys are hitting the ball, game-winning hits, making plays. You know, the pitcher gets that second time around there uh, to see how the guys are, uh, whether or not they're able to win and sustain uh, the leads, winning two out of three. Uh, you're going to have to do that if they're going to get back into the race. Well, Cliff Lee is obviously doing his job today. The starters have done their job for the most part. On this homestand, he delivers a 3 0 fastball for a strike. It's 3 and 1. I mean, the pitching has not been bad at all. I mean, everything gets magnified when you're losing, but, you know, if someone has to take the blame, for me, it would be more offense than it would be for the pitchers. Kevin Franz had a step to his right. Oh, he sailed the throw. He saw that right from the get go, and yep. it's going to send McHenry out to second base. Okay, when you haven't had a start, you get in there, you. Last thing you want to do is to make an error after you end up picking the ball. He almost had too much time, if you will, as he sets himself. No big deal. And there it goes. You can see that arm uh, angle when he's throwing it. He knew right away, like, oh, no, I just get the start and I'm going to throw a ball away. Good feet work on that. He had plenty of time. He just, just sailed on him. Made the play look easy. Boy. Pedro Alvarez singled his first time up at a strike on the outside corner 0 and 1. Ahead one and two to Alvarez in his previous at bat when he got the base hit. Yeah, this when you're on defense, you end up 
making an error, you are just hoping that they don't score. You don't want to be the one that lets in a run, especially when things aren't going well and you're not scoring well. Got him. Tied him up with a fastball. Fifth strikeout of the day for Lee. Now there are two outs here in the top of the fourth. Well, so far, picking up your teammate for that air as he gets that fastball up and in on him. No chance to hit that ball. That's just, you're hoping to foul that off if you can. Top of the lined out to center his first time up. Hopefully just asked Eric Kratz to go through the signs one more time. Outside, one to know. Just from the body language, I think Tabo thought that pitch was low. Yeah, he's well constantly though around the plate. You know, so I mean, if it's just borderline, that's why you don't mind facing guys like Lee, even though they're tough pitchers. Over the top comes right at you. Out of play, off to the right, two and two, the count. One of the few pitchers that just won't pitch around anyone. If he's walking batters, that's just because he doesn't have the control that day. But for the most part, he comes right at you. Reminds me a lot of Steve Carlton, the way that he would come at a hitter. Difference, however, is that hard slider that Carlton used to throw. And he throws a curveball in the dirt. It's three and two now to Tabata. And McHenry back to the second. That's the second three ball count of the day for Cliff. Barmas on deck. Just a beautiful day to day for a ball game. Out towards center field. Carrera wandering around, makes the one headed grab. And Cliff Lee certainly picked up his teammate Kevin Franz. And after the error, the Pirates get nothing. Out to the bottom of the fourth, three, four, and five do up for the Phils.
phone because Philly Sports Talk is on the air tonight at 5 o'clock only on Comcast Sportsnet. Join the Eagles draft conversation with the great Ray Dittinger. He'll be in the studio. Derek Gunn will be live from New York. See, Michael's trying to figure out who are the Eagles going to take in the first round with their first pick. He's working all the angles, checking off, uh, checking out all the options. And by the time he's on the air at 5 today, he's going to have all the answers. I think that's what he's doing, huh? Well, he's either doing that or he's ordering some dinner for later on for everybody. Okay. It looks like he's talking to someone important. I think dark glasses on, serious uh, face uh, expression he has. And he might be asking Roger Goodell, the commissioner, what are you going to wear tonight? What kind of suit are you going to put on? <laughs> oh, boy. Bottom of the fourth inning, Chase Utley, Ryan Howard, Lance Nix so will lead it off for the Phillies. And it's one ball and no strikes to Utley. Chase struck out his first time up. He's now four for seven uh, against James McDonald, including that home run in his return last year. The Phillies will have that kind of a return this weekend when Carlos Ruiz returns to the club on Sunday. Carlos better have gotten his rest during this uh, period of being on the suspended list because uh, he's going to come back Sunday and he, he may not see the bench for a little while. Yeah, well, I'm sure he's going to want to be able to go out there and play. He wants to hopefully turn this thing around the way things have been going. Utley takes a strike, three and one. Carlos had a home run in last night's yeah. ball game. And the one thing for sure, though, at least that's another batter that you're going to have to to worry about, and one that has. And Kratz starting to come around, don't get me wrong, but, you know, Carlos has gone where he's had that really good year, so he knows what he can do. All four Utley's aboard. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizen Bank, where good banking is good citizenship. Is it a time you experience good banking? By Chevrolet. Visit your local dealer at ChevyDealer.com. And by Thomas Jefferson University Hospitals. Call 1 800 Jeff now for an appointment. Here's Ryan Howard. He doubled his first time up. Howard now uh, with six doubles and two home runs. His average at 282. See, the number to the left is a good number, 282. Yeah. It's that middle number and the one to the right that. The, well, they're low right now. Oh, at least for runs, him. RBIs, obviously. I mean, you want him to have more home runs, RBIs, than even having that uh, average. But uh, everything goes hand in hand. You, know, you have that average so that you're having a little bit more opportunities. I mean, if he was having hitting 300, he would be hitting more balls that uh, hopefully would be hard. But, you know, he's the type of hitter. He can take off and make up. A lot of ground there within a week's time. And the dirt gets away from McHenry. That's going to move Utley up to scoring position. Yeah, they've already scored that a wild pitch. Well, he's doing really nothing wrong other than swinging at bad pitches there as that ball gets away from him. At the glove turned the wrong way. That's one for me. You want to just get out on all fours, block the ball, try and keep it in front. Deep down the right field line foul. That was a scream. See, now there's a difference now when he's swinging and missing at those pitches inside. Doesn't do anything for the psyche of the pitcher. Now he's going to have to think twice coming inside. And if he does, that is going to be really off the plate there. That's how a hitter can control what he's able to hit. You can see he cleared his hips on the inside pitch. Tried to twist it there to no avail. Lays off and it's three and one. They appeal, no swings. This is the third base umpire. 
He wasn't so uh, in a hurry to come right back in that uh, hot kitchen again. The hitters got to be able to dictate their bats by the way that they hit some of the balls. It might be inside or outside. Ryan may have helped him out there. Yeah, got to get it up. I mean, the, the ball he hit out yesterday was a high breaking ball. Plus, this hasn't been a pitch that's been called that uh, breaking ball that's been inside. Those are some of the keys you need to know as a hitter when you're going up to the plate. A little bit higher. A little choppy swing, however. But following it off, what you want to do, move the, the runner. Three and two, the count to Howard. Staying alive, fouled another curveball off. Starting to do a little bit better in terms of uh, falling balls off that would be on the outside part of the plate. When he starts going good, he'll be hitting balls to left center consistently. It's 92, and actually he let him throw it. So you see a pitcher throwing 92 about his best fastball. You don't have to cheat on him, meaning that you don't have to really just guess. You can react. Therefore, you won't get fooled as much on the breaking ball. It would be down somewhere. Try to jinx McDonald. Here's the 3-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. He got him with a curveball. That was probably ball four. Yeah. We had four strikeouts for James McDonald. That'll bring Lance Nix to the plate. Well, Murph, we just saw James McDonald with a lot of pitches. Many of uh, those pitches around the strike zone. Yeah, you know, it's been kind of a Jekyll and Hyde season for James McDonald so far with the Pirates. But in his third start, he started four times going into today. In his third start, he allowed eight hits and eight runs against the Cardinals. After that start, Mike McHenry, uh, A.J. Burnett, and Russell Martin brought him into the film room, and they sat him down, and they showed him a highlight reel of him striking out batters, one after another, to try and get his mind back to a spot where, you know, he knew he could do it. So his next start, start number four against the Braves, he struck out eight in six innings. So that kind of thing, it seemed to work with him. And, you know, he's been up and down. We've seen him be up and down a little bit today. But uh, for him, it, a lot of it is right between the ears. So they're trying to get him into a positive mental standpoint, guys. Yeah, and Russell Martin uh, knew James McDonald from when the, the two were with the Los Angeles Dodgers a few years ago. So obviously had a relationship with him. He's always been a kid who's had a world of talent. And it's just uh, keeping that talent refined. He just got Lance Nixon a fly ball to center for the second out. By the way, Murph, this is uh, your take your child to work day, and I see uh, Colin is uh, your son Colin is wandering around behind you out yeah, there. He's hanging out by the wall back there. Yeah, you know, uh, gets out of school and gets to come to a baseball game. And, oh. deal, and, right? and is now holding up the wall. <laughs> yes, he is. <laughs> now, why did you bring your stroller though, too, Murph? <laughs> well, no, yeah, that's not mine. That's not mine. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I get tired. <laughs> Here's Dominic Brown, who struck out his first time up. And Brown takes curve ball. It's 0-1. Tell you what, though, I, I, that's a that's really a good way to be able to get back your psyche, going in and looking at positive tapes. I mean, why do you want to go in there and look at yourself striking out or giving up home runs and so on? Put that tape on where you you're getting guys out. You want to make someone feel good. That's what we do all the time. I'll tell you, all he has to do today is look at the second when he allowed the leadoff double to Howard. He got out of that. And even here, there was a runner at second with nobody out, and he's gotten Howard on strikes. Yeah. And Nick's on a fly ball to center, and Chase is still leading off second base. Well, that was a big strikeout because you want movement on that. But again, he's got to know the strike zone. You've got to swing at strikes. 
Off the end of the bat. Shallow center field. Here comes McCutcheon. He can't get it. The Phillies will take the lead. Dominic Brown goes to second. He's there sliding. It'll be an RBI double. one nothing Phillies. Little luck, too. Yep. That ball right off the end of the bat. McCutcheon not really moving quick on that until after it goes. He tries to dive. Hard, hard ball to judge, though. Big guy gives you a swinging, a long swing, and then it doesn't go very far. Give Dominic, however, credit, though, for hustling, getting in the second. Yeah, so he's in scoring position with two outs, and the Phillies can add on here with Carrera, who struck out his first time up. He's 0 for 1. And Carrera pops it up. Right side. The first baseman Gabby Sanchez battling the sun. Phillies settle for one run in the inning on the RBI bloop double off the bat of Dominic Brown. On to the fifth. Phillies strike first. be a rising junior or senior of post-secondary education at one of the eligible colleges or universities within the Philadelphia region. You must complete the application. Now this is important because the deadline is the 30th of April. For more information go to phillybroadcasters.org. $1,500 scholarship given out to a lucky participant and there's the first ever Callis Award winner Josh Schreger who's wow. working in the truck today. Awesome. So the camera's on Josh today. We can see the half of Frank Gilbuena and, of course, Sang looking outstanding as always today. Pitch is low. It's one ball and one strike. It's inside our truck here, Sarge. Inside the truck, which is here at the ballpark, which we've been showing the last couple of days. Yeah. I had a chance to go visit the sound room again. And Fanavision. Well, got some friends over there right now, Tommy. Fanavision folks who you called out last night for yeah. their... It, and you called out Dan Baker in particular for his inability to get the count correct up on the board. And I know division. that there's other people that actually uh, do the balls and strikes, but they assured me that, hey, everything was uh, would be taken care of. I will say this. We go to a lot of ballparks, obviously. Yeah. Places like Miami, Atlanta. The ball strike counter here at, at Citizens Bank Park is right nearly 100% of the time, whereas those other ballparks, it is not correct all the time. And when I went in, I said just that, Tommy, that I was talking about some of the other stadiums, okay? So your, we fixed everything. Your words actually, just got mixed uh, up a little bit. Just a, just, a, just a tad. James McDonald takes a strike. It's 0-1. Hard workers uh, that are there, by the way. Now, by the way, 
the ball strike counter is not the only thing that they're doing uh, during the games as James McDonald gets a hit. Now what they'll do is they'll update McDonald's average because he has two hits today. Yep. They'll put one B up on the board in right center field. They'll fix his average on the big board in left field. And they're also doing all the video production that's going on in the big board. Oh, well. See that's the big one. Everybody looks at that one all the time but there's some others around the park that they also handle they all strikes in right field the, up, the scoreboard gets updated. Yeah I don't know if you've actually gone and taken a tour there at all or not but it would I haven't, be. Uh, I have not taken an official tour. I have been in there uh, but I have not taken an official tour. I have. Listen. Just got to get around the ballpark. Just got to get around and talk to the people. Too. <laughs> Owen won the count to Starling Marte. He's one for two. And it's 0 2. Did I hear somebody saying James McDonald could not hit? I know he came in 167. Solid line drives. Well, statistically, <laughs> statistically. <laughs> He hasn't shown an ability to hit coming into this ball game. Marte's down looking for the sixth strikeout of the day. But well, he's pitched him tough. After that first hit there, he has just gone to work on you. That's the one thing Cliff Lee will do. You can get a hit off of him and he comes right back at you. It's a tough pitch to hit. No, oh, his balls are up, but they're not just up out over the plate. They're up and in. There's a purpose to them. Which is difficult to hit because if you end up hitting it on that location, usually you're going to pull that foul if you hit it at all. Brandon Inge 0 for 2. He's fly to center. He's gone down looking. No balls. One strike to count to him. Out to left field. Dominic Brown off to play that one and a hop. McDonald stops at second. So two hits in the inning. And it's the second time, or I should say, first time in this ball game, the, the Pirates have had two base runners against Cliff Lee. That's a smart play there. I mean, we've seen him before, Dominic Brown, when a ball is hit out there to maybe try and die, but, you know, you want to keep it right where it is, especially the way the score is. It's a good play. Andrew McCutcheon 0 for 2 in this ball game. At the knees, it's 0 and 1. Yeah, so far just not swinging very right. Another one that McCutcheon usually swings at a lot of strikes. He's been working the count. And then once he gets to that 2-2-3-2, two, 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 not having a good swing. Inside. Much better hitter than what he's showing right now. They made the All Star uh, last year for the Pirates. Well, it's interesting, too, though. No matter what, usually when you hit in that third spot, even if you're hitting or not, you get the respect like you're hitting. As most pitchers know that it is a matter of time before you'll come out of that. Well, he's got it even two balls and two strikes. And Kratz is going to go out and have a conversation with Lee. Shallow right field. This is going to be a tough play. Nick's on the run. Sliding makes the catch. In foul territory to wrap up the top half of the fifth inning. He was the only one, the only one who could make that play. He had a long way to go, and he closed quickly at the end. Goes into a little slide, watches the ball into the glove, 
And Cliff Lee works out of a jam here in the bottom of top of the field. Cincinnati Reds, a lot going on that weekend. Not only is Dusty Baker in town to see Sarge, but Friday is Irish Heritage Night here at the ballpark, the 17th of May. Sunday, Wistar Institute Melanoma Awareness Day, presented by Independence Blue Cross and Citizens Bank. Now, fans 14 and under that day will receive the, the free Phillies floppy hat. Tickets are available at phillies.com, or you can stop by the box, box office at any time. Eric Kratz will lead it off. It'll be Kratz, Cliff Lee, and Jimmy Rollins against James McDonald here in the bottom of the fifth. And Kratz takes inside. One ball and no strikes. Kratz 194. With his 0 for 1 today. Too, that play by Lance Nix to end the inning. He made it look a lot easier than it was, especially when you factor in the wind, how fast he was actually coming. That's when you gotta time it to be able to catch the ball. Pratt sits it on one hop, Inge knocks it down, one away. Yeah, I can only imagine, Sarge, how difficult it is to be able to gauge the wind go into a slide but then still keep your eye on the ball and yeah away. and I thought the reason he went into the slide really going too fast coming by the fence so it goes into the slide but to really keep your concentration take a look at it and going into the slide look at his eyes though how he focuses right on the ball that is as good as it gets sliding and making that his head st uh, stood still yeah. the whole time. Yeah, and then looking at him, I mean, he started really closing some ground because he knew he wasn't going to be able to get there. So he closed ground, and then he slowed up to be able to get there. It was a terrific play. One ball and one strike to count to Lee, who grounded out his first time up. And Lee takes low, two and one. That's a fair ball. Sanchez makes the play. McDonald didn't get over to cover, and Lee's safe at first. Well, he's an athlete. You give him a, a little bit of an opening on a play like that, and he's going to take advantage of it. Well, I tell you, there's another example why you hustle on the field every time you're out there. Pitchers will have a tendency to forget when that ball is hit to the right side. He's got to get over. He's acting as if he's in the stands. You can see him taking off, not running there. Now he's running. Lee, as he comes in, has the nerve to lean a little bit. As you can see, what a great camera shot as he tags the base. Here it is again. Take a look at it. He smoked this ball, but he's hustling and running all the way as he beats the pitcher right to the mound. To the bag, I should say. Boy, I tell you, it's, it just shows you why he's such 
a good competitor, this Cliff Lee. So it shows you why you should hustle all the time. He takes off now. McDonald steps off and throws and got him. He was trying the element of surprise. I think he expected McDonald was just going to go to the plate and forget about well, it. You know what? I don't mind that for me. I really don't. You fans know, fans don't then, mind it either. Every now and then to try and maybe make something happen. I don't mind it because they're actually winning. Now, if they were losing like that, that would just be a bum play. And he's just going on whether or not it was a surprise. Hey, kudos to him for trying to steal a base. Well, the other thing, too, is Sanchez wasn't holding him on, so he was getting a good lead. He probably would have had the bag stolen if he waited for McDonald to go to the plate. I can't tell you how many times I've seen Greg Maddox do the same thing. He'd actually ask for the time of the pitcher. I'd give him a time of 1 1. He would go anyway. Well, Wheel said before, he said, uh, you know, Cliff Lee, he can help the Phillies offense. Just hit one out of the ballpark. Well, he was trying to help the offense there by getting into the scoring position. Still in the base. Well, again, with the score the way that it is, for me, I don't have a problem with it. Two and two, the count to Rollins through an off speed pitch. Now, obviously, if you're losing in that situation, you know, and Rollins is coming up, eh, I don't know, you might want to frown on that, but I don't think we've had an attempt by any pitcher other than Cliff Lee this year. Rollins lines it to right. Tabata is out there, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit. Cliff Lee will take the jacket off, go back to work on the mound with a 1 0 lead as we head to the sixth inning. The 2013 season. The Phillies closer has been there waiting for the call and delivering when the phone rings since the season started. Jonathan Papelbon takes the mound and has been taking down opposing hitters in absolute fashion. He has owned the month of April, never blowing a save in his career during the first month of the season. It has been a cinch for Cinco Ocho, and it's brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Changing the game. Well, at this point, if uh, Cinco Ocho came into the game, it would be a tough save situation for him. Not a very nice day to sit and watch at Citizens Bank Park. Better to be in the sun on the first base side at yep. this point than maybe the lower level on the third base side. We go to the top of the six. Gabby Sanchez, Michael McHenry, Pedro Alvarez do up. That's a good spot right there, Sarge. Oh, right in that sign, you're right. First pitch to Sanchez, a little low. It's 1 0. Sanchez is 0 for 2. He's fly to center. He's popped out to first. All right, Sarge, so we've watched the Pirates these last three days. We've seen the Reds so far, we've seen the Cardinals so far. Do the Pirates have a chance to win that National League Central? Well, I, you know what? At this particular point, you can't say no to anyone in that uh, Central. 
You know, Pittsburgh has the ability to, to come back. Haven't seen Milwaukee and Chicago there in the Central. St. Louis is steady. And uh, Cincinnati should be pretty uh, steady this year. Well, no offense to the Cubs. They're 6 and 14. Not sure if this is their year to contend. Well, they said this is the year. Now towards center field. Carrera on the run. That's well hit, and it is gone. Gabby Sanchez is homer for the second time in this series, and we're tied up at one. Yeah, this uh, will be getting him in the lineup. This Gabby Sanchez, he's a better hitter than what he has been showing. Guy can hit the ball to all fields, and when you hit him out in that particular area, and you know, again, the fleet is going to challenge you, and that's a long way to hit the ball out there near that 387 mark. Some of those guys I'd like you to see throw some of that off speed pitches, and Gabby Sanchez is one of them. So, a brand new ball game as McHenry pops it up around home plate. Kratz off with the mask. One out. Well, if the Pirates do contend for the Central Division title, and I agree with you, I think that. They could contend. It's going to end what has been mm. one of the longest stretches without wow. getting above the 500 mark that we've seen in this game. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. well, again, too, the, their best player right now, not even really any kind of resemblance of himself, will be able to help that record out for sure. But well, look at that. I mean, you go into the year, you're just saying, wow, wait until next year. 20 straight years. Less than 500. The Pirates are three games over 500 at this point. But as Clint Hurdle will tell you, the first half of the year has not been the issue for them the last two seasons. It's been the second half. Alvarez takes in. It's 2 0. Oh. Two years ago, I think everybody thought at the All Star break they'd be above 500. Last year, I don't think anybody in their right mind in August thought they would finish under 500. They were playing so well. Got to be able to to finish it up. Two and one the count to Alvarez broke his bat off the glove of Howard and they won't get him. I guess that's going to have to be a base hit. Too hot to handle. Yep. Now last year and the year before if you look at what they did let's say just up until the all star break. You know, 2011 they were well above 500 they were above 500 yeah. and then in August they were 8 and 22 last year. You know they were below 500 in April but then above 500 in May June they won 17 July they won 17 but then yeah. they only won 20 combined the last two months of the season. Yeah, And that will kill you too to work that in. Well, that's what that consistency and that's why you play. 162 ball games, so there's not going to be many teams that would just get in because of luck. Tabata takes strike one. It's 0 1. He's lined out and flied out today. Off the hands, that's going to hang up there for Lance Nix. Tell you what, off the bat, I thought Sarge that was going to drop. Yeah, it did sound as if it was either broken or off the end of the bat. Tell you what, though, I mean, there's, there's clubs that you would think they were going to play well this year. Detroit Ball Club, they're just 10 and 9 so far going into uh, today's game. You look at the Toronto Blue Jays, although they end up getting their shortstop. Um, end up getting hurt. But I got to tell you, I mean, the way the Kansas City came in and that Central, uh, American League Central, I, you can't say that you wouldn't be surprised that they would stay there. We saw them all during spring training and said, man, who are they actually playing to have that record? Well, guess what? When they came to the ballpark here, you you understood why they were end up winning the ball game. I think there are three teams that are surprising. Uh, so far this year and, and not necessarily in this order the Red Sox the Rockies and the Royals 
for their success. Now the okay. Royals to me. I think everybody's been anticipating that they would have success but they're doing it at least at this point yeah. in a small uh, fraction of the season. They're two games over 500. Well to be in first place right now would we'll just show you that in Boston. No one really talked about them just because of the different moves that they were making. You didn't think they were going to compete. You thought maybe Baltimore although they are in second uh, uh, place but and the Yankees they go nowhere. I mean they they rebuild. They, they stay right there around second, third place. And then when they're supposed to win it, they're at the top of their division. Yeah, well, see, Colorado, I don't think anybody expected they would have the pitching or the way they have it set up, the style of pitching. New manager and Walt Weiss. Yeah. They're 14 and 7. Yeah, and especially, too, now you got San Francisco and uh, you have the uh, Arizona, the, the Diamondbacks that have been playing good in that division. And then Los Angeles Dodgers loaded up. So you're right about that. Colorado playing extremely uh, well right now. One ball, two strikes to Clint Barmas. Two see outs what, here in the sixth. See what happens, though, within the next month or so. Off the end of the bat, slowly hit. Rollins will have to hurry. Gets it over to first in time. Side is retired. However, the Pirates have tied it up thanks to a home run by Gabby Sanchez to lead off the top of the sixth. It's his second home run of the series, and he just shot that one into left center field. We're at 1 1 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. By Xfinity, the official HD triple play provider of your Phillies. And by Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most innovative lineup ever. Shop at ChooseNissan.com. Bottom of the sixth, Pirates won, Phillies won. Uh, Kevin Franzen will lead it off. It'll be Franzen, Chase Utley, and Ryan Howard. Against James McDonald. Transit it is 0 for 2. Yeah, the first pitch to him. Up high, one ball and no strikes. Kevin played uh, just about every day last year in the second half of the season. He knew his role would be different this year, yeah. obviously, with Michael Young coming over and Chase Utley being healthy. But I think a lot of us were unsure what role Freddie Galvis would play. Galvis makes the club out of spring training. That yeah. changed, I think, Franzen's role. Wouldn't yeah. you agree? Oh, absolutely. 
one and two the count. I mean the way that Freddie played he almost made you take him on the team and again he's played well for the time that he's been in there he's done one heck of a of a job I'm sure they would probably like for him to be able to be having more at bats because that's the way that you end up developing up high two and two the count but if he doesn't get enough at bats guess what he can go to uh, winter ball or play in uh, in his country there and be able to make up some of the at bats there but the hustling and his enthusiasm that's just something you don't teach that comes from uh, within him right meanwhile for Franzen and he, you know offensively he did the job last year and defensively yeah. you know he's been okay yeah and he's probably thinking well I think I did enough at least to be able to have a few more at bats down the right field line Tabata in foul territory and he's not going to get that one it's like he didn't get hurt the way he was going into that wall yeah it's a little different a little different technique as he almost surrounds the wall. he does look down but I've never seen anybody look down and not look up to see where that uh, ball is and just guessing or hoping it might go in the glove. Wow. There was a little hope that it was going to go in the glove there. You got to look up. <laughs> Here's the payoff pitch to Franzen. A high ball four, so he's aboard the leadoff wall. For years, StubHub has been the place to find great Phillies tickets. And this season, you can get more with your tickets thanks to StubHub Fan Rewards. So get to StubHub and grab your seats today. Well, now with Chase Utley and Ryan Howard due up, you know, the way the Phillies offense has been over the last uh, couple weeks. You got friends at a board. Let's see if you can get something going here in, in a 1 1 game. Yeah, that's that's a good at bat there. That's one of those situations. Walk is as good as the hit. Well, even in that at bat there, too, he got tested, Franson, and swung at a lot of strikes. It, it, I mean, it just sounds easy, but difficult to do, but the more. Strikes you swing at, you're going to get hit. Whether or not you're on this level or high school or college, you have to be able to swing at strikes. In the dirt, McHenry blocks it, and it's one ball and one strike. Chase today is 0 for 1. He walked his last time up against McDonald. And wound up coming around to score in the double by Dominic Brown. Got they called time out there, and then as you see, he did not leave though the batter's box until the umpire called time out. You leave, and the umpire doesn't call time out, the ball's thrown, and it's a strike. Guess what? Umpire's gonna call it one. A little low, two and one. Good running count. That's one of the things that not a lot of managers do uh, these days. Is start that runner. Always seems to be a good offensive play when things aren't going well for you. He doesn't go, and Utley pulls it through the hole on the right side. Franzen on his way to third. Tabata's got a good arm. Here's the throw. It is offline. 
And he needs to anchor himself down or he was going to slide right out past that bag. Well, you're right. Jonathan really showing off that arm there in right field. Chase not going to second base simply because that throw is low. Anytime that outfielder throws that ball down near the cutoff man, as you see, it goes right through the hole. Automatic first and third as he's hustling. Throw a little bit offline there. Take a look again. Watch how he grabs the bag so he doesn't slide off. He knew he really had to go. Good pace running by Francis. So first and third with nobody out. Howard doubled his first time up, struck out his last time up. Ray Searage is coming out to the mound to talk to McDonald. They're also giving the bullpen some time to start to loosen. Boy, what a big spot in this series well, for the Phillies. Absolutely, and they've had some of these spots there, runners on first and third. You know, only time you really would take a double play is if you have nobody out, but every time it seems that they get one out, they end up getting a double play that next uh, the next uh, batter. So, again, this is one of those ones you want him to hit a fly ball uh, in this situation here for me and Ryan Howard. No strikeouts, however. Well, Wilson's the left-hander. Hughes, Jared Hughes, the right-hander. All right, this is the situation we've had the last two days. First yep. and third, nobody out. The Phillies have not been able to execute this play the way Charlie Manuel wants them to do it. Yep. He wants the guy at third to go on contact to avoid the double play. And if he's a dead duck as the throw comes to the plate, then get in a rundown to allow the runners, if they can, to advance to second and third. Very good. No, and again, it's common sense too when you're running the bases. I mean, sure, there's rules that yeah that we want you to do this, but there's also common sense. Howard is up. Here's the pitch outside. One and zero. He'll be followed by Lance Nix. Howard, it is double his first time up, pulled his hands in and hooked it down the line. His last time up, he had a long foul ball down the right field line. Now that struck out. There goes Utley. Pitch is high. McHenry makes no throw. We'll forget about the first and third with nobody out. Now it's second and third with nobody out. Now he's still in that one strictly on the pitcher. Got a great jump. Well, you'd like for him to pull the ball, even if it's on the ground, should get an RBI there, and then another runner on third base, which would be Chase Utley. Catcher, they've been doing and going out to that mound an awful lot during the course of the series. I mean, you're supposed to do all your meetings before the game starts. Not much has changed. Same pitcher that's been out there. What if he was crossed up at all? If he didn't throw the pitch he expected. Caught it okay. 2 1 pitch. Inside three and one. Now first base is open. But you've got Nix who's been swinging the bat well in the on deck circle. Well, Ryan has to look for his pitch no matter what. He's ahead in the count. If it's a fastball and in the zone, just don't be late. It's a curveball and he lines it to right field. That's it for a base hit. Franzen scores. Utley is stopped at third. Boy, a good throw by Tabata. It's a 2 1 ball game. An RBI single for Howard, his eighth of the year. Good hunting right there. That was a pretty good pitch that Howard went down and ended up getting a breaking ball. You can see. 
the extension, but everything that he ends up pulling, whether or not it's outside uh, or not, pulling that ball to right field. Tabitha showing off that uh, good arm. Well, they're going to bring in the left hander to face the lefty Lance Nix. It's going to be part of a double switch. Snyder's going to come in to play right field for the Pirates. So Clint Hurdle went out to the home plate umpire, Mark Carlson, to make the double switch. So that's going to be it for James McDonald. He lasts five plus innings, and he's out after scattering five hits. He didn't pitch badly at all, but Clint Hurdle's going to go to his bullpen. This is an AT&T call to the bullpen here in Philadelphia. The fills up one and threatening to get some more. Indians get together. All fans coming to the ballpark tonight. Thanks to the folks at Teva. We'll receive that cap right there to your left. Make your plans now. Order your tickets by going to Phillies.com. It's Teva Respiratory Asthma Awareness Night here at Citizens Bank Park. Cliff Lee wandering around the dugout. He, his team's giving him a 2-1 lead and they're looking for some more. They're at the bottom of the sixth inning. The Pirates go to their bullpen and they bring in the left-hander Wilson. Justin Wilson. 1 0 with a 1.50 earned run average. We saw Watson earlier in this series. And now Justin Wilson. Now Charlie Manuel is going to go to his bench and bring John Mayberry Jr. up to bat for Lance Nix. So he goes righty instead of lefty against the left hander. Uh, just playing the uh, percentages. But these are the kind of runs though you, you want to pick up. You want to add on, you add on. This is how. You add on when we talk about that. Score early, you add on these type of situation. Got to be able to get some runners in. Mayberry swings at the first pitch. Now you like that? Oh yeah, yeah. Falling straight back means he was right on the pitch. But if you're coming off that bench and you're looking for that, I mean you know it's easier said than done. But you want to be making solid contact. Been doing a fairly good job. Needs to uh, show a little bit more uh, power. Right-handers has a tendency to stay on his heels. A lot more aggressive on the left-handed pitcher. Brown ball just foul. Right past the calves of Chase Utley. And it's 0-2. Get that run home from third. Curveball hit toward third. At least coming home. Alvarez's throw is in time. Chase was trying to get in the way of that particular throw. Yep. Yeah. Well, we've seen it three different ways now in three different days. First and third with nobody out. The first night. 
Mayberry was a dead duck at the plate. Yeah. Last night, Jimmy Rollins was kind of doubled up, although it didn't go down as a double play in the book. Well, you can see where Chase is running right there on the grass, almost trying to really get hit. Even went out a little bit further. He tried to jump down. Oh, I don't know if he had time to really get down after going that particular way, but you know, again, it just seems to be awful in terms of getting the guy in from third just on the approach. Still two on though with one out. Yeah, I just I've always thought that that was just one of the easiest situations. You know, in the game to be able to get that RBI, uh, hit that ball on the on the ground. You know, and I have been in situations where you end up pressing, and you just, you know, no matter what you're doing, they're making a good pitch. But yeah, you know, more than not, that's the thing that wakes you up, getting those runners there, third base there with with, with less than two outs. The 0 2 pitch to Dominic Brown. In the dirt, gets away from McHenry. Both runners will move up. It's second and third for Dominic Brown. Again, brings that infield in. Inside to a two. Well, when managers do that early in the game, the reason they're doing it is because they feel, wow, not going to be able to score a lot of runs today, so they're trying to cut off any potential runs early. Line drive towards center field. Howard goes back to tag. McCutcheon from his knees won't have a play at the plate. It's going to go down as a sacrifice fly. It's an RBI, and the Phillies lead it three to one. Oh boy. Ball smoked. Two RBIs today for Dominic Brown. And Ezekiel Carrera is coming up. That's a good as bad as he stays right behind the ball almost. Hitting a knuckleball out there to McCutcheon center fielder. See how he had to go down to his knees. That's good hitting there. Glad he wasn't in a position to really get off a throw to home plate. Well, now Carrera, he's 0 for 2. He has struck out. He's popped out. Up high, 1 and 0. Playing today for Ben Revere, who's. Uh, Got a quad slash calf injury. His legs bother him. Right. Well, Hopefully, it's just something that's just day to day. Big part of his game is his legs. On the cap. In the dirt, McHenry blocks it and keeps Mayberry at second. See why this kid is here. I mean, he's got a live arm. 94, 95. He's getting the fastball up there. Like most young pitchers, a lot of times that location eludes them. Another pop up on the infield for Carrera. This one on the left side. 
Alvarez the third baseman in foul territory makes the catch the Phillies settle for two to retake the lead here at the bottom of the sixth inning Ryan Howard got the scoring started Howard was able to hit a bullet to right field that brought home Kevin Franzen Phillies added one more they lead it 3-1 as we go to the seventh here in Philadelphia. Time now for your local Honda dealers game summary. What, what's new? Phillies in another nail biter. Close games. We go into the seventh inning. They just threw up two to break that tie. Gabby Sanchez with a home run. James McDonald out in the sixth. Ryan Howard has had a good afternoon. And Cliff Lee mowing him down in this afternoon. Looks like Cliff Lee zero in that walkout. Corey. Well, he'll face Travis Snyder to lead it off. And Snyder shows bunt and bunts through the first pitch. It's 0 and 1. There's John Mayberry who takes over in right field. He pinch hit for Lance Nix. Only other change for the no other change for the Phillies here in the seventh. The curveball 0 and 2. Snyder 1 for 10 in the series. He's been out in right field for the Pirates. And now the 0 2 pitch. Another curveball and a call. Strike three. Boy, that one was a big one. Yeah, <laughs> Snyder thought it was too big. He thought it was outside. Good pitch by Cliff Lee. He's had great stuff here this afternoon. Well, that had some serious loop to it. <laughs> These lucky fans are tonight's or today's Citizen Seven. They were to see a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Citizens Bank with the most seven day branches in the Philadelphia area. To find a branch near you, visit citizensbank.com. Corners are in with Marte up at the plate with one out here in the seventh. Marte's just, one for three. And he just did fake a bunt there, and that gets him in even more. Coming up on 100 pitches. Hey, he's due to bat second in the bottom of the seventh inning. 2 0 pitch. Blow it in. 3 0. Who wouldn't think Adams would be available today after all those pitches last night, but you never know. Could be a, a, sh a shot for an Alma in the eighth inning today if, in fact, they go that route. But need Cliff Lee to get through this inning to even think about it. See his pitches by inning. 19, the most he's thrown in an inning in today's ballgame. Imagine he's had a whole lot of three ball counts still now. Third one. Oh. 
Mm. Well, that's the first walk of the day issued by Cliff. I thought he had that one. Now the Toyota Major League scoreboard, Dodgers and Mets are tied at one. That came from the bottom of the seventh inning. It was a nice at bat by Mart. You get a walk in that spot. Really close pitches he took. Kind of like Franzen's at bat to begin the uh, sixth right. inning for the Phillies. Right, a real good at bat by Kevin Franzen to set up that inning. Soon. Goes and then stopped. Check swing foul ball. He did not get a good jump, and that's why he stopped. And Marte got a little bit of a start there, and then the check swing. Yeah, he was going to. He wasn't going to go. Now he goes. Pitch is popped up. Utley and Rollins bluff him. Mayberry's under it. It's way up there, so Marte <laughs> can still get back to first. Well, they had him too. Thing was too high. They were doing a great job of smoke screening Marte at second base. That thing's a little bit lower. They get a double play. That happened last week when the Phillies were at Cincinnati. Brandon Phillips and uh, Zach Cozart did that to Jimmy Rollins. Rollins said it was a good one. Yeah. He said it, he didn't know where the ball was at first, and then he saw the reaction from the crowd. He chases pointing that it's over there, <laughs> over there. That was really good. And it, the reason that happened is because he's running on that play, so he doesn't know where the ball is. I think he may have picked up Nick Leva at the last moment. He looked over to the third base coach. Well, he had to because that was a steal. That was not a hit and run on a one two count. That was a straight steal. You can tell by the way he took off. He wasn't waiting till the pitch was thrown. So when you're running like that, you have your head down. You're not looking in at the hitter necessarily. So that's the kind of play you can get deked on. Here's McCutcheon. He's hitless in three at bats today. There he goes, and the pitch fouled back, and it's one and one. And one thing for Marte watching him in this series, he will try to run when he's on first base, and that's all part of being a base stealer, is you want to do it. Because they're they don't necessarily are sending him there. They just give him some information at first base, and he's taken off. Guys really get as good a jump. When they're told to steal is when they steal on their own. Hit over toward third of the first base hit of the series for Andrew McCutcheon. He'll put runners on first and second with two men down. He had been 0 for 14 in this series, 0 for 17 overall, dating back to this weekend. Yeah, he had a hard ground ball there. He was due, but thankfully they kept him in the yard. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposing team one two three and Cliff Lee this afternoon has, has not recorded a one two three inning Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity your home for the most live sports giving you all your favorite sports all year long there's Almont he's throwing in the bullpen for the Phils. This long conversation has given the Phillies a chance to get Almont ready in the pen. Yeah, they, uh, they must have given the little talk to him thing, and everybody ran in. That way, you can have multiple conversations. Right, and maybe Mark Carlson doesn't come out as early because there's very little strategy involved right now with all the infielders with two outs and two on the two-run lead. Gabby Sanchez has hit a home run today. It's the only run of the afternoon for the Pirates. Takes the pitch just off the outside corner. It's 1 0. Oh. 
Well, he's missing now a little bit. It's two and zero. Starting to labor a little bit in this inning. Pirates credit for they can't, they stay after you. Back toward the middle. That's going to drop for a base hit. Marte will score. McCutcheon on his way to third. And Gabby Sanchez has had himself a pretty good series. He has two RBIs today, and it's a 3 2 ball game. It's like Cliff Lee isn't allowed to walk anybody his last couple starts where he gets hurt. It's amazing. And walked anybody. Walks with one out in this inning. Guy scores. I have to think they're going to go get him here with runners on first and third, and McHenry due up. Well, Mont's been warming up in the bullpen. Here comes Charlie Manuel. It's going to wind up being it. At least it seems that way. It's a slow walk. Not as slow as some of his walks, but usually if he's keeping him in, he'll trot out to the mound. Now he hasn't signaled just yet. I'm going to keep him in the game. Yeah, this is a take your temperature meeting out on the mound. Showing a lot of confidence in Cliff Lee. Well, he just made a really good pitch on Sanchez, and you give Gabby Sanchez credit. He fought that thing off, and he's strong enough. He got it over Utley's head. Now McHenry is 0 for 3 today. He reached on an error back of the fourth. Tying run is over third here in the top of the seventh inning. It's also gotten McHenry out a couple to three times. The way hasn't gotten him out, but an error on the play. So three times he's had a chance to get him out. So that's another thing. You think, well, has this guy worn him out today? No. That 19 pitches was the high mark for him earlier uh, in the game. Uh, he's thrown 20 pitches now in this inning. Valdez has joined Almont in the bullpen with Alvarez in the on deck circle for the Pirates. The 0 1 pitch, swing and a miss. He got him with an off speed pitch. It's 0 and 2. Trying to get that day off on Monday, so that'll give guys an extra day. The yeah, Phillies are in the middle of 17 consecutive games. They're coming to their feet. This is the last batter for Cliff Lee. Now time is called. Debbie Sanchez is tying his shoes. He never moved. He just stayed right there, staring in for his sign. The 0 2 pitch. Line drive base hit it to center field Sanchez was moving on the pitch so he goes to third McCutcheon scores and it's a 3 3 game so he broke his bat two strike pitch these guys are really playing well so McHenry gets the RVI single we're all even Pedro Alvarez is due up two out runs well it's not Cliff Lee's last batter they're going to let him face Alvarez he went away. Maybe a change up. On the ground almost and he just reached out and served it in the center. They have two dunkers in this inning to give him credit. They put the ball in play off a tough pitcher. Basically have done this with two outs. The walk was with one out. Yeah. And then the fly ball to right. And now Alvarez takes up one ball and no strikes. Alvarez has two hits today. One talked was off the glove of Howard. Talked about it last night. The Pirates are playing right now like they expect to win as the game goes along.
Well, he was 1 2 with McHenry. Now he's 1 2 with Alvarez. It's kind of like most left handed hitters. Looks like he wants the ball down, so he just got him to chase upstairs there. Runners lead off first and third. Ahead the pitch. Curve ball. Two and two. Wilson, the pitcher, is on deck. Broke his bat. Rollins out towards shallow left is there, and the side is retired. Two bloops, and the game is tied up for the Pirates. They send seven men to the plate. Time to stretch here in Philadelphia in a 3 3 game. Answer. All right, Wills, here you go. Who is the all time Pirates leader in walks with 937? I don't know. Is this is somebody who could have played a long time, maybe? Absolutely played a long time. Played at the vet. Part of a number of their successful runs in the 70s. Who would you walk in that line? Who would you not want to beat you in the 70s, Wills? The great Wilver Dornell Stargell. <laughs> Willie Stargell is correct. <laughs> he was the guy you would not want to beat you. 937 walks. That Thank is you. the correct answer. Thank you for the hints. Well, Justin Wilson stays in the ball game in a 3-3 game. It'll be Eric Kratz, and then Michael Young is in the on-deck circle. It's 8-9 uh, and nine up for the Phils. Kratz is 0 for 2. He flied out to left. He grounded out to second. Hit the ball hard his last time up. They've really been using their bullpen a lot, so nobody's up right now for the Pirates. Well, he said Wilson was in the on deck circle when the inning came to a close. Well, in that case, they'd have hit for him. That but, is true. They probably would. Yeah, but in this case, you know, that they didn't get to him, they're going to use him. They probably would have, and they would have had a, a somebody get up real fast. Yep. Going to have a tie game and let him hit with the bases loaded. But thankfully, Cliff was able to get out of it with a tie game. Think of that walk that Marte drew, get the whole thing started, how close those pitches were, too. And I mentioned at the time what a good at bat he'd had against him. Well, he's had a good series. And McCutcheon gets his first hit of the series. Kratz fouls it away, two and two the count. Yeah, McCutcheon, the Phillies have lost two of three. McCutcheon hasn't done a whole lot. Alvarez has had some pretty good swings in this series, and his broken bat base hit 
was a big one. They had two earlier yeah. in the game. Yeah, that they had the two bloopers in that inning too. So it's a point you have to give the Pirates credit. They just they're like a dog in the pan leg right now. <laughs> they're a really persistent team. Two two pitch. They may say he went around on this. Yep, they did. It's intent. A lot of times with an umpire when they call on a check swing and there was intent there as he started to swing and couldn't stop even though he tried to pull his body back. Michael Young will pitch hit for the Phillies. Take a look at it again. Now see, as I say, they go for intent now. That and he's through the zone, obviously. He was now definitely trying, trying to bail. He was trying to pull back. That's check swings are their their judgment. One of those where there wasn't much he could do once he started to go forward. So Young is up. His 14 game hitting streak ended yesterday. He lines the first pitch to left and right at Marte for the second out. So two away. Jimmy Rollins coming up. Let's check in with Murph with the Major League Notebook. Murph. All right. Thank you very much, T Mac. Brought to you by Gwinnett Mercy College. And six months after the Tigers said goodbye to Jose Valverde, he was back trying to close a game for Detroit after a bullpen by committee had mixed results earlier this season. Tigers reached out and brought him back. And last night, he got his first save. Tigers win at 7 5. Valverde was saved number one on the season. And the Milwaukee Brewers, well, their win streak has come to an end at nine. They ran into a red hot Edison Volquez last night in San Diego. They lost that game 2 1. It would have only been the seventh time in team history that they would have had a 10 game win streak. And guys, you see there on the bottom of the notebook, I want to give a shout out to the Morristown Upper Elementary School who is having baseball day today. Everybody gathered around the TV watching our broadcast and raising money for a great cause. Kids for, and caps, getting caps for kids uh, who have suffered from cancer. So a great cause there, guys, as well. It is a great cause. In fact, if you want to go to the Morristown Upper Elementary School website, they have different activities. Uh, that they are doing during the course of the day that you can you can be part of too if you're a baseball fan They're just little activities that are on their website And how cool is having baseball day instead of having to sit in class for a day? How cool is it to have baseball day? I think One ball and one strength to count to Jimmy Rollins Outside two and one Rollins is 0 for 2. He's lined out. He's flied out. By the way, that organization that Murph talked about, Caps for Kids, they have a website. It's capsforkids.org. You can find out more about what they do and what the money from the Morristown uh, school is going toward. The official cap day is uh, April 12th, so it was last week. So they've had a little extension of that. For what's going on at, at the elementary school in Morristown today? Two and two, the count to Jimmy Rollins. Swing and a miss. He got him. One, two, three. Go the Phils here at the bottom of the seventh inning. A couple strikeouts for Wilson, who's done a heck of a job in relief of James McDonald. The Fanatics going to go to work to keep everybody's attention as we go to the eighth.
Dallas Ford stores. Go further. Buy McDonald's. I'm loving it. And buy Dodge. Visit Dodge.com or your local dealer today. It's a 3-3 game as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Just like every other game in this series, it's been pretty tightly contested. Philippe Almont will take over on the mound for the Phillies. Almont takes over for Cliff Lee, who pitched well today. He scattered 10 hits. I mean, literally scattered them. He didn't have a 1 2 3 inning. 10 hits over seven innings. Struck out seven, walked one. And now Almont, one and two. Six strikeouts and six of the third so far. They have another left hander in their bullpen, Watson. Another guy throws pretty well. There's Cliff Lee. And he's up throwing now. There's Watson. We saw him earlier in this series. Another hard throwing left hander. Gorgeous day here in Philadelphia. Perfect shot of Center City. Been a little bit of a breeze most of the day. And Neil Walker will pinch hit for the pitcher's spot. Walker switch hitter batting left handed. And the first pitch coming to Almont. Swings at the first pitch and fouls it away. It's 0 1. The pitcher batting in the seventh hole right now where Walker comes in to pinch hit. Walker 2 for 11 in the series, 253 hitter, a home run, and eight RBIs. Field line that'll slice out of play. It's one and two. The Phillies will head to uh, New York after this ball game. They have a night game and two day games. Tomorrow, Kyle Kendrick will face Dylan G. Jonathan Pettibone will make the start, his second major league start on Saturday against Sean Markham, who makes his first appearance of the season. Talk about guy throws a lot of change ups. That's Sean Markham. And the one two pitch. And he rolls it foul. Got a piece of his foot. That's in the Dodgers are in the eighth inning. And that's a 1 1 game. He shook off change up to get the breaking ball. And the curveball is outside, two and two. Piece of Walker again. And he even has a shin guard on, he keeps missing it. <laughs> Thank you. Walker will be followed by Clint Barmas and then Travis Snyder, the bottom third of the Pirates' order. Who knows where the Phillies are going to finish up as far as runs scored goes. In today's ball game. They have really gone through a, a rut of three runs or less. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. Fastball in. And there's one away here in the eighth inning. Give all my credit for that one. He shook off fastball, just regular fastball, to get the pinky for fastball in and put it right where he wanted to. They, they decide on fastball in. And that really tied him up. That's in a good spot. One away, Barmas 0 for 3 is the hitter. 
Phillies have scored three runs or less in 11 of their last 13 games. Puts a lot of pressure. Uh oh, Armas hit square in the back on your pitching in these kind of games because it doesn't take much for the opposition to catch up or beat you. Yeah, and aside from Cliff Lee's outing the other day, the starters have. Star has been really good for the Phillies. Uh, the fastball just got away from him. Right in the numbers. Barmas is aboard. Travis Snyder is up for the second time. He's 0 for 1. He came on as part of a double switch when James McDonald was taken out of the game. Well, he threw that big curveball to him to strike him out to start the seventh. Looking good there. And then all the trouble started. Trying to throw sinkers now to try and get him to roll one over into two, get out of the inning. And he stayed off both of them. Now you're in a hitter's count. Another one. Three in a row, and he just spit on him. Turn him loose here. Left-handed pitcher against a hard throw. A left-handed hitter, hard throwing right-hander. I'm going to throw one right down the middle. Almost looked like he would swing if it was a better pitch for him. Yeah, and that was not a bad pitch to no. swing at. That was a middle end fastball. Said so pull me. Three and one. The count now to Travis Snyder. Snyder's at 302 overall, no home runs and five runs batted in. Of the 16 hits, seven have been doubles. And a foul ball, and it is now three and two. A big decision for them now whether they run or not. Big hole on the right side, if he gets it through, it'll be a first and third if they run. Strikeout could be a strikeout double play. Farmers goes and the pitch is hit through the hole on the left side of base hit. Farmers is going to hang up at second, but they've got first and second, and it's going to bring Marte to the plate. Philly's collectible truck is one of the better giveaways they've had each and every year, and it continues. The WB Mason Phillies collectible truck, free defense, 14 and under. That's a good one. That's a that's an 18 wheeler tractor trailer. Make your plans now. What are your tickets for the game against the Boston Red Sox on? The Wednesday, May 29th. All right, well, now you've got Marte, who is one for three in this in this ball game with a run scored and a walk, but he's had a, a very good series. Tough guy to double. A six for 17 in the series. Rich Doobie out to the mound to talk to Almont. Nobody else thrown in the bullpen as of now. Barmas, you see the breakdown on him in this inning. Farmer's not necessarily a guy who's going to try and steal third on you unless you forget about him. So that's probably part of that conversation is, uh, you know, who's going to be back there? Take a look. Mm, left it away from him and a swing and a miss. It's 0 and 1. Ball kind of cut at 93 miles an hour. Oh, 
Wood two. Brandon Inge is on deck for the Pirates. Awfully close. It was outside, but it was an awfully close pitch. Yeah, it was a good two strike pitch, Tom. Mm -hmm. You said it was really close, and it's one you may chase because that's not necessarily a ball out of his hand. You see him flinch at it. And uh, that was a good job by Barclay not to swing. He had the real good bat against Cliff Lee his last time up. And it wound up working out that walk. I had some discipline. The one two pitch hit toward the hole. That's going to sneak in the left field of base hit. Rounding third and being held there is Barmas. So now bases are loaded with one man down and Brandon Inge who has been Mr. Clutch for the Pirates in this series is going to get a chance to bat with the bases loaded. That was a hanger. Tried it again the same thing and that one hung up and gave him a chance to put it into play. Didn't hit it that hard but he found the hole. Brandon Inge has really good numbers with the bases loaded. This is a tough spot and they're going to take him out of the ball game and have Garrett Jones pinch it for him. So Marte with his second hit of the game is over at first. Been a real factor in this game late. So now a meeting on the mound. Nobody's up in the bullpen for the Phillies. Thought maybe they'd have Valdez continue to throw just in case they went to a left-handed bat. But they're going to stay with Oman. Tonight on Sports Night, get complete analysis of this ball game and Cliff Lee's outings and the latest on the Eagles as Chip Kelly prepares for the Eagles' first round draft pick. Get all the news Philly fans need to know on Chevy Malibu Sports Night. Tonight at 6, only on Comcast Sports Night. Garrett Jones, 286, a home run, nine RBIs. The bases loaded the pitch. Fastball low, nowhere to put him. It's 1 0. It's all started with hit Clint Barmas hitting 148 or less than that 148 coming into the game. It was a pitch that just got away. I mean, right totally. into the square of his back. Totally got away from him. Pitch he was swinging at all last night off Roy Halliday. Try to throw him a breaking ball to get ahead. And now Durbin's up and throwing in the bullpen. And now he's got to throw a fastball in there. Oh, yeah. Three and one with one out and the bases loaded. Garrett Jones, the pinch hitter. He's certainly at an advantage right now. Yeah, he's got two pitches to play with right now. He can he can just eliminate half a home play here. The three one pitch. Line drive toward right field. It's a bullet. It's going to go to the wall. One run definitely will score. Nick Leva. It's going to try to hold the third runner the throw to the plate not in time and Snyder slides across the plate safely. It's now a 5 3 Pirates lead on a two run double by Garrett Jones. Now if you ever hit it was in a great spot to hit it was right there. And he didn't miss that fastball. Penn relay started today and it looked like they just broke out on the bases there for a second the way they're running up each other's backs. Here it is. This, this is just straight cheese right down the middle. He knows what's coming, puts it right on the barrel, and luckily for the Phillies, got top spin on her. That would have been a slam. Well, Eric Kratz is out to talk to Philippe Almont. They're giving uh, Chad Durbin a few extra moments. 
And Charlie's hovering around the dugout. They're going to go out and get Oman, it looks like. And no matter what they do right now, the Pirates are just playing better. They get the hits when they need them. They do things right. Well, here comes Charlie Manuel. So Chad Durbin's going to come into this ball game. This has not been the way the Phillies drew it up the last two nights when they've had the lead going into the seventh inning. They gave up the lead in the seventh, and now the Pirates have taken the lead here in the eighth. Garrett Jones has the big hit. We're going to go to the bullpen as Felipe Almonte is done. Sunday, May 19th, when the Phillies take on the Cincinnati Reds. It's a free Phillies floppy hat to fans 14 and under. Make your plans now. Order your tickets at Phillies.com. The Wistar Institute Melanoma Awareness Day, presented by Blue Cross and Citizens Bank. Well, what started out as a pretty good day, just like yesterday for the Phillies. They got very good starting pitching yesterday from Roy Halladay, today from Cliff Lee. They had a 3 1 lead going into the the top of the seventh inning, Lee gave up those two runs to tie it at three, and then Almont's given up two here in the eighth. And now Chad Durbin's going to try to come in and just somehow stomp out the fire because the the Pirates still up second and third with one out, and they've got Andrew McCutcheon due up. Felipe Almont just ran so many deep counts and just had to throw a, a fastball to Garrett Jones, and Jones didn't miss it. Sometimes they miss it. He didn't miss it. Right. But you know, you hit a guy that's hitting 140. With one out in the eighth inning of a tie game, you just you just looking for trouble because you have certain outs in your lineup, and that was one looking one for you right there. Oh, McCutcheon takes outside. It's one ball and no strikes. Seems like they spent this whole series with the infield in of the Phillies late in the game. Just a tough way to play. Two and zero. Oh. They're pitching around him right here with the base open. Yeah, it's a good point. I don't want to load him up again necessarily, but you have a slow. You have Sanchez on deck who, if he hits a ground ball, you put the infield back and you can get the double play to get out of the inning. You don't want to throw McCutcheon something in the in the zone right now. They're not. May as well just put him on. Well, I think that's what Kratz is going to do right now. He stands up and he's going to walk him. So that'll load up the bases. Now, Gabby Sanchez has had a fairly productive series, but as Wheels mentioned, he is certainly a slower runner. So you have the ability, if you choose to, to turn two and have the infield settle back. Field a double play depth. Yeah, the first pitch outside, one and zero. Oh. 
fans give him a derisive cheer, but they really were pitching around McCutcheon. And they were just hoping that he would swing at a, at a non strike. And to his credit, he didn't. Everything that the Pirates have hit today, out wise, has been a strikeout or in the air except for two ground balls. Only two ground ball outs. Well, they need to make it three ground balls and four outs. Yeah, if he right get, here, if he could get Sanchez to hit at somebody, get out of this. Down by two. Cliff Lee went the first seven, allowed three runs. One ball, two strikes the count. Mm. The pitch was up, and Sanchez fouled it away. Bullpen six earned runs and three in the third the last two games. Yeah, they've been scoring late of the Pirates. Shallow right field. Mayberry coming in, getting behind it. Marte tagging from third. Mayberry's got it. Here comes Marte. The throw to the plate is not in time. Kratz had to go up the line and couldn't get the tag in time. And it's a 6 3 ball game. And they had a two run lead, so Nick Lay was going to gamble there with a good runner. They're going to appeal to third. They have to wait till Durbin gets back to the mound to make the yeah, appeal. I think to he third. has to go to the mound and go through the motions. Now we're going to see because the umpire at least is aware of the fact that something's coming over there and he's going to anticipate making a call. But they, um, the throw right there, the throw right there had a heck of a chance to get him if it's online. All right, now this is a live ball. Obviously, Durbin will look in, come step set, off. step off, and then flip over to third. And Dan Iasonia says he was on. And we think he was too. Here's the split screen. It's actual, actual motion here. Yep, no problem. He's on the back. Now Mayberry was getting behind that throw, but then at the last moment caught it. Didn't catch it, uh, catch it in front of his body. It was kind of behind his body. Now he had enough on it. It was just offline. Yeah, he threw it on the fly too. You know, one hopper has him on the fly. On the plate has him. But uh, Pirates are executing, the Phillies are not. Sometimes when a throw goes that way, it means you opened up when you throw it. Kenry takes down and away, one ball, no strikes. Well, Phillies down by three. They have two at bats to go. They've allowed five unanswered runs here. The three runs that have scored are the responsibility of Almont. The runner at third is his responsibility. That's a uh, Garrett Jones. Runner goes from first, and McHenry fouls it away. Phillies were going to let McCutcheon go. That's a lot of laughs for a catcher. They're back to getting beaten up all day, and then they beat one off their foot while they're hitting.
Clint Hurdle doesn't know where this season will take his team. He knows what's happened in the second half of the last two years. But at least for this first month, his team came into today's game 12 and 9. And they played some good baseball in the series. We've seen in these late innings how well they played. They've gotten hits, they make contact, they run the bases well, they pitch well, and they deserve to win some games. They haven't won this one yet, but what they've done here late in the game is the way you win games. Dave Joust, a longtime major league coach and scout, next to Clint Hurdle in the dugout. Hurdle goes from first, pitches high ball four, and the bases are loaded again. And Pedro Alvarez will be the ninth man to come up in this inning. Sounded loud, didn't it? it? Sure did. It sounded like a power. It's going to wake up the the whole second deck down the right field line. Yeah, this guy's got some serious pop, and he just got out front a little bit. Listen to this. Oof, that's loud. Your reaction from the crowd. You knew it was foul once it left the bat, but. Oof. These guys are on their way to play a weekend series with St. Louis should be pretty good baseball games. Yeah I mean they've had it they've had some tests already you know schedule wise uh, with who they played. But going on the road to take on the Cardinals. You know they played the Reds already they played the Cardinals already. But they've done that at home now they're going to hit the road I mean this is a long road trip for them. They go to St. Louis for three and then Milwaukee. Two and one the count. And Alvarez hits a moonshot foul. Oh my. He's strong. That was in the third deck. Look at that. I mean, that's, yeah, you're right. That, that is ridiculous. But it's another ooh ah ball. Yeah. It's an impressive display of foul balls right now. Here's another one. Oh, did he get out front of that? Look at this guy. Oof. My guy's got some power. Now it's three and two, so the bases are loaded. Three and two, the count, two outs. Here in the top of the eighth inning, three runs have already scored. Kids still looking up at the. His mom saying, you know, they had a guy one time, son, named Willie Stargell. He used to hit him just like that. Who led the uh, franchise in walks Walk. and maybe moonshots. Off the end of the bat, out toward right center field, Carrera makes the catch. And the Pirates leave him loaded, but they batted around here in the eighth inning. They scored three runs to break a 3 3 tie. Garrett Jones off the bench with the big hit for the Pirates.
play of the game and this was a good one early on it was a big play at the time McCutcheon hitless in the series at that point and Lance Nix into foul territory able to track this baby down for the final out of that inning and these teams have gone really well for uh, like six innings yeah. and then all of a sudden they have just blown up in their face well, that, uh, that highlight is brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers Neil Walker stays in the ball game to play second base Garrett Jones at pinch hit for Brandon Inge. Walker had pinch hit as well. So Walker's in at second base. Tony Watson is the new pitcher. So they go from one lefty to another. That's because Utley and Howard are due up after uh, Kevin Franz. Watson 1 0, an ERA of 2.70. It was just a couple innings ago we were talking about how important the walk was by Franz in the lead off the sixth. That broke a that helped break a one all tie. Phillies led it three to one. But now five unanswered runs in the seventh and eighth for the Pirates. And the Phillies have to play from behind. First pitch is up and in. One ball and no strikes. Outside corner one and one. Philly split the four games against the Cardinals, and what they were hoping for today was to split the four game series with the Pirates. And they still may do that, but they've got a lot of work to do. On the right field line that'll slice out of play. Two other day games going on uh, while this one is being played. The Mets and the, the Dodgers are in the bottom of the ninth inning. Now there are two outs in that ball game with the Dodgers on top and the, the Tigers and the Royals are tied at three in the ninth inning. Another foul ball. Franzen over toward third. Alvarez lays it, and it's down the left field line. Franzen on his way to second, and he'll get there easily. Yeah, he let that ball play him. He, he had to come forward a little bit for that and try and take that nasty hop away. And then when he did, he tries the back backhand. As Tom said, no laid it. Kevin Franzen, good at bat. Another one. See how he backs up, and when an infielder backs up on a ball like that, they get in trouble. Sometimes you're able to come up with it when you do that. Sometimes you can't help it, but you have to back up. But uh, it'll be a double, but it, it, it's a play that he just made very difficult by the way he approached it. All right, so Kevin's in scoring position now. Chase Utley's the batter. Utley today is one for two, a single, a walk and a run scored, and a strikeout. Phillies are trying to get another base runner to bring the tying man to the tying run to the plate. Nobody up in the Pirates bullpen. I figure they do not want to use. Melanson and uh, and uh, Grilly today. Utley bunts right in front of the dish, and McHenry picks it up and throws him out. He's trying to do the same thing he did yesterday, where he bunted up the third base line, and it looked like he may have uh, dropped the bat before he was able to direct it where he wanted it to go. Yeah, he bunt for a base hit, as you say there. It should not be a sacrifice. There he is trying for a base hit and right out in front of the plate where the catcher can come and get it and throw him out. It's a good thought process trying to get the tying run up there by bunting and getting on. And well, it's a lefty. And it's not a sacrifice. They no. just scored 2 3. Not with the score the way that it is in that intent. Howard has two hits today. He's two for three. Does have an RBI.
used to say in Montreal all the time no sacrifice. There's different scoring rules on sacrifices and scorer has some discretion at times. Ground ball that'll get the run home and another RBI for Howard but there are two outs. The Pirates will trade those two outs for that run. Six four the score Howard with two runs batted in today. Mayberry is 0 for 3. Or excuse me he's 0 for 1. He grounded into a fielder's choice his last time up. Pitch hitting for Lance Nix. 6 4 the game. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning. I should say 6 4 the score. To the outer half, one pitch to the inner half. Sanchez may have a play on this one if he can get over to it. And did he hold on? He did. That's a heck of a catch going right into the top of the rail off the first base side. So the Phillies do get a run after the leadoff double by Kevin Franzen. He scores on a ground out. Gabby Sanchez has had himself a pretty good series offensively. And he's throwing in a little leather as well to wrap up the eighth. Is Earth Week. Food scraps make up 7% of household waste on average. Try composting your food scraps instead of sending them to a landfill and watch your garbage bag deflate. Green is universal. Raul Valdez will take over here at the top of the ninth inning. Valdez, 1 0, a 10.24 earned run average. And he'll face Neil Walker to start things off. Walker's batting in the seventh spot, then Clint Farmis and Travis Snyder. Pirates have used just about everyone today. They have not used uh, their backup catcher. Or John McDonald, their yeah, backup catcher, their backup infielder. Right, Martin got a chance to sit today. He's been doing most of their catching.
Walker fouls the first pitch away. The Pirates don't have anybody up in their bullpen, so it looks like oh no, now they have somebody up. They're trying to get through this game without using those guys they've used so much. You know what? They don't have anybody up no. in their bullpen. No, they're they're trying to get through this today. Oh, and to the count. And you know, both these lefties have done a good job, Wilson and Watson. They are quiet. I saw Rojas wandering around the, the mound and I said I thought it was him from a distance and I realized. I don't think they have anybody that's built like that in their bullpen. <laughs> Walker has it off the glove of Chase Utley. That's going to have to be an error I would think on Chase. It'll be his fifth of the year. That was a catchable ball. Yeah he had a time perfectly he just didn't catch it. It's a little humpback liner drifting, drifting, drifting. He reaches up and. I don't know if he touched it. If he did, he just got a little tiny bit of leather on it. Just but a little bit. It'd be tough to give a hit on that. Jay Dunn is the official score today. I believe I heard him say E4, but. Barma squares, takes low. It's 1 0. All right, I didn't hear him originally, but I just heard him now. He said, error second base. Yeah. Farmers bunts again. And it's foul. It's one and one. Yeah, they're trying to get that run back. They just gave up. Because they're bunting with a right handed batter ahead of a left handed hitter. Who's an outfielder. And they don't have outfielders left. On the bench. So. That's how much they want this run. Ben Mazzaro is warming in the bullpen for the Pirates. That is a fair ball. Oh. Oh. The runner's got to be out at second. Now they're saying no. My goodness. Kratz is saying that Barmus was out of the baseline. That's why I thought they would call some kind of obstruction or interference there because he was above the baseline. At least that's what I, I thought. Now I know that the runner has to be given an, a, an opportunity to go. But right there. Well, he's saying that he pushed, he's saying that he pushed Barmus. You know, Barmus is walking around with the bat and everything yeah. like that. So the runner will be safe at second. They do get the out at first. It's going to go down as two six three. So Walker's up at second base. Charlie Manuel's pointing to the same thing. He's saying he's in this area. Yeah. And normally when you see something like that when the batter's in the way like that the catcher gets a benefit of the doubt I think right. He may go here. Just because. Well there's a frustration level. He's following following right now. Mark Carlson's the home plate up hard. He is kind of hanging back a little bit. Yeah. He's letting him, he's giving him the say. 
But they know umpires and player and managers know what will get them thrown out if they want to do it. Yeah, I think Charlie's saying that there was obstruction. Sure. Uh, but I think Carlson is saying that there wasn't, and that Kratz, the only reason there was obstruction because Kratz made contact right. to move him out of the way. Right, that's what he said. You know, it looked like he pushed and put his elbow yeah. out to push him, and I think that's was the initial. Oh, there he goes. Iasonia got him. Yeah, Dan Iasonia throws him out, and now he'll just sit and listen. Iasonia's the acting crew chief in place of Jerry Davis. What's he doing in there anyway? He didn't need to come down here. I guess he's, he's the acting crew chief. He's going to come down to break it up. He's probably telling him that too. Like, what are you doing here? And Charlie is still. Charlie is still uh, letting him have it. I mean, it's not over the top. But he has been ejected from the ball game. So the runner is safe at second. The put out goes 2 6 3 at first. Here's another look from the side. He bunts this ball. So he's trying to get to the baseline. Yeah. And he, well, that's what it is, I guess. He's trying to get to the baseline, and Eric and pushed him. Yeah, and Eric pushed him away. So there's no obstruction from that standpoint because the batter needs to get in the path. So that's what it is. I, I thought he had started out and then was staying out and it was in the way of Kratz. Snyder is swinging a miss. It's no balls in one strike. Runner at second base. It's a 6 4 ball game. And Walker's over at second base. One ball, one strike, the count. Out towards center field. Carrera floating back, makes the catch. Walker tags from second. He'll trot to third. And there are two outs and a runner at third. Just to wrap up that, that rule, uh, it's rule 4.03C. Allows a fielder to position himself anywhere in fair territory. If the umpire deems the fielder's actions are a deliberate effort, to block the runner's view, uh, then he'll allow the play to just go, and that's basically what happened there. At least he, that's what we're assuming. Without talking yeah. to Mark Carlson, we're and just he, assuming. And he and Eric Kratz are talking it over right now. That's Barmus, the guy who hit the ball. He's been a factor here late with that hit batter. It seemed like an hour ago. There's more to that rule in that section, but that's the gist of it. That it's what to it know. It's a Starling Marte. Marte. Two hits, two uh, runs scored today. Dan Isonia, the crew chief, came in to clean up the conversation. Mark Carlson wasn't going to throw Charlie out of the game. At least it didn't seem that way. There's a pop up, first base side. Howard over toward the dugout and runs out of room. And it's one ball and one strike. It's side two and one. The only thing is, you go back and you look at rule 6.06. .06, it says if the batter interferes with the catcher's throw to retire a runner by stepping out of the batter's box, interference shall be called. But I don't know if that's on a play like that. I well, think that's. Yeah, that ball was in play that I think stepping yeah. out of the box is. On a swing, you know that type of thing where their momentum takes them in front of the catcher. Yeah, I, I think, think that's. that's that I think that's what. I think the play that we were, we mentioned before is that, or the rule that we mentioned before is the rule. Mm -hmm. Two-two pitch, swing and a miss. He got him. None of that matters now. It's a 
High fastball from Valdez. Marte is retired. No runs, no hits, one error, one man left. On to the bottom of the ninth. Lance chance for the Phils. Down by two. Analysis only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies post game live. Yeah, the hope is the Phillies will pull out a victory here in the bottom of the ninth inning. I have a lot more to talk about on Phillies post game live. Ryan Sandberg has the lineup card. He is managing in the absence of Charlie Manuel has been ejected from the ball game, but Sandberg is still over the third base coach's box. That was the general plan. But he would still have the lineup card. When Charlie Manuel is a, was ejected from a ball game this year, Phillies don't have a quote unquote bench coach. Mick, uh, Mick Billmeyer is a coach on the bench, but it's Rhino who has uh, got the card, and he'll do some managing from over the third base coach's box. Dominic Brown will lead it off for the Phillies here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And Brown hits the first pitch down the left field line. It's a fair ball, and it hits off the half wall. Brown's on his way to second. And he'll get there in scoring position. It's his second double of the day. And the Phillies will bring the tying run to the plate here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And they kicked up some chalk on that one. Still nobody up in their bullpen. You have another left hander Carrera up and then Kratz. So they've gotten to the point where they at least get the tying run up here in the ninth inning with nobody out. There it is. He slices it right inside the line. Didn't hit the line. Had Mazzaro up last inning. He's pitching two out of three games in this series. Right-hander. This is the left, le the, the second left-hander, and last one they have available. Carrera is 0 for 3. He's struck out. He's popped out twice. Browns at second base. And Carrera takes a strike of the knees. It's 0 and 1. He was trying to bunt for base hit there. He was not trying to move Brown over. Alvarez was playing in at third. And that guy just throws a breaking ball and gets it over to go 0 2. Eric Kratz is on deck. Going to the count with nobody out here in the bottom of the ninth inning. And a called strike three. Carrera down looking. He didn't agree with that call. He thought it was high. That'll bring Eric Kratz to the plate. Kratz is 0 for 3. Take a look at the pitch. Well, he's going to have trouble hitting any kind of breaking ball the way he was pulling off. Pitch to take with two strikes. Well, now Kratz is up. Galvis in the on deck circle for the Phillies is a pitch hitter. Eric Kratz 0 for 3. Now he has for time.
Yeah, yeah they're just going to go with Watson here. Nobody up. A lot of guys have been used quite a bit for Clint Hurd, a lot of his bullpen. So he's going to stay in with this and see if they can get it done this way. Oh. Phillies have right handed hitters. Galvis coming up, then Rollins, and then they go to left hand hitter and Utley. Well, Watson's only thrown 17 pitches. He has one out in the ninth, and I say 17 because he threw a. He threw the eighth inning too. He allowed the one run. Well, sometimes the manager will just tell you, "I can't use these guys." You know, I got a, I got a guy out there, and he's got to do it for me. Kratz grounds it towards shortstop. Barmus throws him out. So two away here in the ninth inning. And here comes Freddie Galvis. They okay, threw him a change up, something off speed, and got him to hit a little spinner off the end of the bat out front. So Freddie Galvis, not a home run hitter, but that's okay if he can keep the inning alive and get Rollins up there. Phillies can continue to make some noise. Freddie hitting 226 this year. He does have one homer. And he pops it up. And this should do it. Pedro Alvarez and Clint Barmas, and it's Alvarez who puts it away, and the Pirates have taken three of four from the Phillies. And that wraps up a very disappointing homestand for the Phillies as they lose it today by a final of six to four. Last two nights they had a 3 1 lead late, but the Pirates were able to race both leads and pull out the victory. Over the fills. Gabby Sanchez had a decent series for Pittsburgh. He's our Chevrolet player of the game. Today he was two for four with three RBIs and a run scored. So WB Mason delivery of the game, and that was Garrett Jones coming off the bench with the bases loaded. A 3 1 count, got the fastball, smoked this thing right off the wall. A couple of runs scored, gave the Pirates the lead they would not relinquish. And that is. All right, WB Mason delivery of the game. I'll give the Pirates some credit. They had themselves uh, some clutch base hits, some really good pitching for their bullpen in this series.